Bop. All right, a toast to the Modern Goodies Podcast. All right. All right, guys, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Modern Goonies Podcast. I'm your host, Trevor King Miner, and on the mic today, got my co-host, Chandler Swing. Gonna burp. Oh, all okay. right, there we go. Uh, and then uh, our guest, uh, Zach Wright. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a good start. <laughs> we haven't been opening these very well lately. Um, all right, so yeah, our one-year anniversary is coming up, so welcome to podcast number nine, and the next one that we put out will be the, uh, will be the official one-year anniversary on podcast 10, so uh, tune in to see that. But tonight, we're going to talk about a couple random uh, different things. We're going to be a bit more structured than we usually are, because we've kind of just been spewing shit out of our ass for the last couple ones. Uh, so each of us actually have a topic that we want to bring up, and we're going to try to start going to that format to where we all have one specific thing we'd like to talk about, and then we kind of we'll let it snowball from there. But no matter what, we'll all three get our talking points in. Um, so uh, for right now, we won't we won't start with one of those. We'll kind of start. We'll pick up on a conversation we were having like a minute ago. Uh, so we were just like randomly bullshitting about uh, Disney and Pixar movies. I I like I said a minute ago, I don't really like Disney movies that much, and I think Zach agrees. Yeah, because I don't know. Like, like I said, like I said earlier, I fucking I just think they're like way too feel good. And I don't know. I don't know why. And then like the musical part, like I don't like any musicals. Like I won't watch fucking Phantom of the Opera. I someone's screaming outside. Yeah, I won't watch like Phantom of the Opera. Like fucking when Phineas and Ferb does it, I like cringe. Like I, like, I don't like any like musical segment in a show. So like Disney, I've always been super like not not for. Uh, but Yeah, I think it's really cringy. Like, uh, we were watching, last time I was over here, Bob's Burgers was on, and there was like a few Okay, that was pretty cringy. Oh, it was horrible. Like, I guess I wasn't, I guess I didn't see this. They went on, like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, they were doing the commercial thing, right? Well, that, and then they're, like, the next episode, like, they had, or, like, the kids made, like, a video or something, like, for school. Uh-huh. And like the son, I don't know his name, but like it was like a whole like song and dance number about like farting and it just like wasn't funny. And yeah, well, that's the weird thing. So Sawyer brought this point up that like I, I can't remember last time I was with him and he was like, I want to like I want a statistical study on why people like to cringe. I, oh, he was talking about TikTok. And uh, because like I think that's kind of like the main appeal is that people get in there or a lot of people watch it kind of like ironically because they like to watch these shitty videos of just like kids with like super bright smiles, like super douchebag kids just doing these like mad lib, like ad lib things or they're like mouthing over and it's just like clearly cringy. But for some reason they like to watch it. And I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I think some people think it's cool, like the dances and stuff and like, I, well, yes, I, 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 I feel like that. But at the same time, I like, hate it. I can't watch it. Well, I feel I feel like there's a lot of comedy that's based around like you being like, and then like kind of like chuckling because you feel uncomfortable. Like for me, that's what the office is. Like the whole office humor is like I sit there and I'm uncomfortable. But a lot of people find that awkward in the air <laughs> feeling like really funny. And I feel like a lot of shows either try to replicate it or do the same thing in, in like a different way. Maybe like Bob's Burgers is one of because Bob's Burgers is kind of like it's got like that awkward, super dry, it's kind of deadpan. Yeah, and like I feel uh, like I feel like people find the cringy awkwardness funny, and I'm just I'm not like that. I don't fucking I don't find that shit funny. Like, yeah, I I don't know. I I think I I didn't really re- realize it until you said that. But yeah, some of the the dialogue in Bob's Burgers was kind of like The Office, like pretty dry. Like they'll just have like little one liner like stuff, but. Yeah, I don't know about the cringe thing because I, I don't like it. I fucking hate it. I can't. Oh, I know. I, I I absolutely I can't stand TikTok at all. Like, it, it, normally I, normally I'm pretty for like new age social media stuff. Like, I loved Vine when it was on because I thought a lot of the Vine stuff was actually pretty funny. And yeah, there's some vines that are just iconic. Yeah, like I I, I hate Vine and like okay, it's well, the yeah. same. It's the same philosophy. Like, I find Vine super cringy. Like, well, there were so like yeah. I don't know. There were definitely some people who, once again, they're kind of like the TikTokers now who were just, I don't, I don't know, like you could tell they were trying too hard. And that's yes. kind of that's kind of why it was not funny. But there were some that actually had like there were like famous comedians on there that were like really fucking funny. And that's why it was good. But I, I feel like that's kind of lacking from TikTok. I don't know. I just 
I, I get on there. And once again, I see a lot of people like my sister's age who are like fucking 16, 17. And they're just doing like a bunch of dances or they're like, oh, here's this funny movie quote. And they're literally just like badly mouthing over it. Oh, yeah. And, that was what I was about to say. And, That's the ones I, 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 cringe I so bad hate on. that so fucking much. And like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because like I edit video and I know when like it, people are doing a, I, I don't know, like people are doing a bad job when compiling clips or something. But I don't find like badly like. Like, like you acting something out and being all like animated behind the camera. I think that's fuck. It's ridiculous. It's so stupid. I don't know much about it because I like I just know it sucks. But I think it's super funny when I'm like out in public or something like I was at Chick-fil-A like a month ago, like ordering inside. And there's just like this girl's like in line, like some like young, like teenage girls in line with her mom or something. And she like just sets the phone up on like the counter, like where the ketchup and shit is and mm. she like starts doing like dances and shit and i'm just like no. <laughs> 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 well i mean i can't say i can't say i wasn't caught a couple times like filming the youtube videos that we used to make when we were kids because we were definitely like we would do shit in public or we'd have to do it in a different spot than just the house like we'd have to do it out on the road or whatever and yeah people would be like what the fuck well that's a perfect example a lot of your old videos were very similar like in style like it would be like very over the top ridiculous like at least the editing was good. Yeah, I don't know. Just like uh, okay, so similar like, to Vine. Like someone would come into the screen and scream something, and well, then like you'd pan oh, well, over yeah, to okay. something random, and it's just okay. Like, so like this is where we disagree. That like I find Vine funny, like because there were a lot of people yeah. like I like chaos humor, just like random shit that it, like Eric Andre humor is like the epitome of my like just nonsense doesn't make any fucking sense. And a lot of Vine, there was a lot of Vine that was like that, just like out of fucking no, out of left field, like shit that would happen. And so like, yeah, so we would, we would make the, we'd make the videos and that was my, that was my style was to be just like fucking crazy with, but I never did the fucking like, oh, here, let me sit there and just like, oh, oh this is funny. Let me like mouth over the words of well, no, whatever. Not, like, yeah. yeah, that's just not, not good. Like not all my videos were good. I'm going to fucking admit that now, but there were some that were fucking funny and I'll stand by that. The one with, when he had like the videos, like. Oh, oh yeah, back, like, in oh the yeah. The, when, the Garrett, head- when Garrett was talking, oh, oh that, that, that well, that, that was so funny. Yeah, wasn't that that just be- you recording Garrett? That that wasn't really like a an organized video. No, no. It no well, so so what happened was is we discovered it. So for for those who don't know what we're talking about, so we basically uh, uh, back when the PS3 was like really big, we had these headphones and we would go to the voice changer and we would turn it up all the way to where you could just hear like a bunch of like a really delayed uh, voice of yourself in it. And so when you would try to talk while hearing yourself super delayed, you weren't able to speak like a normal person. And yeah, so like we, we put that, we did that because uh, Garrett was like fucking with some setting on the PS3 and like that, that happened and he starts like talking and it like, it's like, blah, blah, like you can't understand what the fuck he's saying. Yeah. And it was, we started dying laughing. So then we all started trying it and we're like, dude, I can't do it. I can't speak like, a, I can't speak normal either. So then I just, I had the, I had that camera just like handy. I'm like, all right. So I literally just threw it on a tripod. I'm like, all right, let's start fucking just talking into it and see what happens. And that, that's what, that that's video what happened. Aged like a fine wine. Yeah. We watched it with Garrett. There's oh. videos of that too. Like, well, it's like a known thing, like with speakers and stuff. You can look at really? like drunk mic voices and there'll be people like giving like a big speech and they just sound like they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. And like, it's insane, but yeah, there's like literally like. Well, I didn't. I didn't know that was a thing. Well, that that was the thing is that when we posted that video, uh, people thought we were like faking it. Like people totally thought we were fucking around. They're like, you're just putting the headphones on, talking like an idiot. Like you're being an asshole. I'm like, no, like that's <laughs> you're being an asshole. Yeah, I was like, no, I fucking. Quit it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, that's actually what happens. Like, try it yourself. I encourage you because we couldn't fucking do it. Like that was us legitimately trying to talk like normal people, and it was just slurring our speech really bad. So. Yeah, yeah, it was funny. I don't know. Uh, yeah. The, well, that that in the that in the, the rechargeable flashlight one. I'll stand by till the day I die. That one's fucking funny. Like what? It's was like the, a, was that the one that we did for the class for Hammond's class? Yeah, and we it was like oh, an no. it was like a really shitty infomercial, like a really quick. Uh, I thought that was for Miss Johnson's class. And she no, we we did one. Oh no no, we did a Julius Caesar one for that's hand, that's the worst video I've ever made in my life. Oh, now I'm thinking of the one where I was like Einstein or whatever. No, right. you were Bill Gates. Oh, Bill Gates. And yeah. that was for Hammond's. Oh, that I thought that was for... One. Yeah, that was the flashlight I know. One. I thought that was for Johnson's class. No, yeah, we fucking... Yeah. That one was... So, that one's still funny. Every time I watch it, I laugh. Like, I fucking... Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. What's this new product? Bill. I love this amazing new product. Thank you, Bill. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's fucking golden. 
Uh, the only weird thing is watching it. Like when I have, like, I'm so young, I'm like fucking 15. I have braces. So like, that's the only, like, I, I like cringe when I see that. But other than that, I think it's straight. I think it's legitimately funny. Yeah. That one was funny. What yeah. Was that? I was a child. It sounds like kids screaming and playing outside. Mm. Oh, I can't tell with the headphones on if it's like screaming, like someone's being attacked or if it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just fun screaming. Uh, so, what did what did you have today to talk about, Trevor? What, what was your so I assignment? wanted to so I wanted to talk about. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to talk about, but I just watched uh, Alien Covenant uh, the other day. I was like sitting, I made food, and I was looking on Hulu, and it was just like movies recommended for you, and it was Alien Covenant. And I had seen Prometheus. Like, have you ever seen Prometheus? No. Have you seen the other Alien movies? No. Okay, so like I, it's been a long time since I've seen the first Alien, but it's like a prequel to the Alien series. But they, they take a much more philosophical approach to it than they do. It, it's a lot less about the aliens and more about like get how they got created and why. So it's like it's like a it's interesting. They've got a lot of nice aspects of philosophy in them. So I watched Prometheus uh, a couple years ago and I, I actually like the, the critics didn't really like it, but I really liked it like a lot. I, I liked kind of what they were going for. So the idea behind Prometheus was um, it's like the year 2096, like 100 years in the future, and uh, these scientists basically kind of figure out that like the reason we can't figure out exactly what happened for the beginning stages of human life is because um, our creators are from the stars. Like It's basically like the ancient alien theory. Like People came here and they, they created us and whatnot, so they want to go out and find their creators, and they do all this crazy math, and they kind of figure out like maybe the planet system that they came from. So they, uh, they go out there, and they're so... Um, and then there's and there's like a lot of religious elements to it that uh, they do. There's a lot of scenes that are very reminiscent of like old religious paintings. Like, for instance, the one where what is it? it's like Adam's reaching out and he's touching God's hand mm-hmm. and it's like in the shape of a brain. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know it was in the shape of the brain. It took people 500 years to figure that out. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's. Could, are you? Yeah, here, I'll yeah, pull yeah, it, I'll pull oh, it up. Yeah. I don't know how you're doing this. Now and well, and so, uh, well, I think Westworld does a thing on it. I think Anthony Hopkins had like a monologue about this painting. Uh, what is that? What is it like? A touch? I can't remember the name of this. The painting. hands like creating hands. No, fuck. What is it? Uh, Adam. Painting. Reaching out to. Yeah. Reaching out to God. Isn't that in the Sistine Chapel? Yeah, I think so. The creation of Adam. Yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah. Okay. What the fuck ever, man. I don't care. This one. Or, yeah, suck my dick. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. This. Okay, well, that makes sense now that I see it. Uh, where? The god is the brain. Oh, like the oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so apparently it took people like 500 years to figure out that it's in the shape of a human brain. And what the meaning behind, which basically changed the meaning of the painting to that... Uh, what is it like divine wisdom is not something that comes from gods, but from something that is created within our own minds. Like, Oh shit. Yeah, shit. I don't remember this much dong being in this. Oh, uh, well either. they probably, there's not, uh, I was going to say, there's not a whole lot of dong. Like <laughs> I, I was about to say, like Adam has like a really small penis. <laughs> Like, I was going to say, like, I don't, I don't know if, like, though. we've, like, evolved and, like, penis size yeah, just, like, increased. But, like, if you look at, like, Greek statues or, like, anything, like, old sculptures or something, like, they've got pretty small wangs. Like, no yeah. one's got, like, a fucking hammer hanging down <laughs> to their fucking knees. Hammer. Isn't there a reason, like, I thought there was a reason for that. Like, the reason that they depicted them. With, like, small dicks? Yeah. I had they had small no dicks. idea. I don't we, know. All right, there might actually up. be a reason. Is there? Is Th- there? A this reason? is the important stuff we need to know. <laughs> yeah, why. we we have to know why ancient Greeks had fucking tiny dicks. Oh, wait, wait, no, was it Greeks who made these paintings? No, this was an Italian. This guy was fucking. My, what? This Michelangelo, right? Yeah. Uh, why? Wait, how do I even search this? What the fuck do I say? Why, why do Italians have small penises? <laughs> <laughs> uh, why do people in paintings have small dicks? There we go. I am curious to see the, the results. Why ancient Greek sex cultures have small penises? There we go. Ah, uh, ancient Greek famously fetishized. Okay, god damn it. Fucking click something, something else. Ah, uh, rippling muscles. Sometimes you figure it out. Huh. 
They're usually flaccid. I wouldn't have guessed by the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just imagine them making like a Greek sculpture with, that's just hard as a fucking rock? <laughs> Rewind to the ancient Greek world of around 400 BC and, Gle- and you'll find that large erect penises were not considered desirable, nor were they a sign of power or strength. <laughs> Interesting. The small penis was consonant with Greek ideals of male beauty. It was a badge of the highest culture and a paragon of civilization. Well, I'm Jesus yeah. Christ then. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got a millimeter Peter. The Dalai Lama. Yeah. Holy the Dalai shit. Lama of penis. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so yeah, there we go. There's our answer. That's a nice little That's a nice little side segment. Knowledge is power. Yeah, knowledge is... Small dick is power as fuck. And... Well, the, and the leaf thing, that was like one of the emperors or something, right? That, that they like forced them to cover it up. And that's why a lot, like a lot of these paintings, like the ones that have like the leaf in front mm-hmm. of it, it wasn't originally there. They like superimposed that onto it. Oh, basically. really? I, I didn't think, know that. I think so. <laughs> I would believe I, that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Well, I mean, as time went on and like we started adopting more Puritan values to mainstream culture, things like nudity became, and, and like ideas of, uh, sexuality became like taboo. So that's when we started really like reeling it back. And that's why a lot of us have that mainstream idea that like sex is bad or like sex is like really special and whatnot. Whereas like thousands of years before that wasn't really the case. Right. It was, they're fucking knocking boots left and right with their small whangs. Yeah. Um, so where the fuck was I? <laughs> was I from well, about the brain. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so uh, so the movie has like a lot of that religious. A, that was a good tangent. Yeah, uh, has a lot of religious imagery in it, and it's it's kind of like. And then so one of the one of the things in it is that there is this android on board played by Michael Fassbender, uh, who that the guy because the main thing is they want to go out there, and this guy's funding it because he wants he's like super fucking old, and he wants immortality, and he thinks if he make if he meets these people, they call them the engineers, like the creators of humanity that they will be able to bestow upon him eternal youth. Uh, and Michael, he makes, he's like really, he's wickedly smart. He makes Michael Fassbender, this android. And when he finally meets the engineer at the end of the movie, he says like, the engineer's like, why have you, why have you come? And he tells the guy, he's like, I, he's like, we are both creators. I look, look at him. I have made him in my image. He is the perfect being just as you have made me. And I have ascended beyond you. Like, I, I have come here for you to teach me what you have to know. Like, I want to meet my creator. Well, I mean, he immediately kills them both. But uh, it, it so it's like it, 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 ha- it poses a lot of like really interesting philosophical ideas. Um, kind of poorly executed. The movie's not like the best thing, but there's a lot of, there's a lot to unpack in them. And that's what I, that's what I like about them. So Covenant is a sequel of that. And uh, basically, it, it's like the same kind of idea. It, it, I don't want to go into all the details because it, it, the plot is like super convoluted, but basically aren't they like going to where they were? Like, no. So what happens is, is at the end of Prometheus. So the Android, there's only two survivors. It's the Android. Right, and, uh, his name's David, which is the first creation of God. It's, it's done it on purpose. No, and, not, no, I'm sorry. Not uh, Adam. what, whatever. Uh, Adam's the first one, but his name is David. It's after, uh, the biblical figure, David, uh, and the other girl. And then, yeah, the, the doctor who wanted to meet her creator, too, Shaw. Uh, so they, they, they survive, and they're like, they kind of figure out where the engineer's homeworld is. Because the planet they went to wasn't their homeworld. Oh, it was like right, a random, right, 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 right. It was like I a random place. Um, so they figure out where the homeworld is. So the movie ends with them going there. And then so Covenant starts up, and, like, Shaw has been... Spoiler alert for anyone who doesn't know this. Uh, so the... Is this it, a spoiler for Covenant or Prometheus? Covenant. Well, I guess both. Well, Prometheus, yeah, uh, for both of them. Uh, so anyways... Uh, all right, well, I would still at some point like to see Covenant because I haven't yet. So. Okay, so then I want... All right, I want to tell you this. So, basically, so, wait, so it starts off and it's kind of like... Um, you don't really know what's going on, but you know uh, they this little ship is sent out to colonize another planet. And they get like they hear this distress signal from a random nearby planet, which was the engineer's homeworld. And so they, they're like, well, well the, our planet that we're trying to go to and colonize is like seven years away. And this one, this distress signal we're picking up is like a month away. It's not that far. It's like, why, how did we miss this? And so the captain makes a decision. He's like, all right, let's go down there and investigate. Like, this is a very Earth-like planet. We might be able to colonize this one instead of waiting seven years to get to the other one. And so they go down there and a bunch of crazy shit happens because it's an alien movie. Um, but, but basically David is still there. The Android is still there and he is kind of like responsible for creating some of these creatures and like he, so it's kind of like become this trickle down effect of like David, uh, the, and so like the human created the Android and then the Android created the, uh, 
the aliens, and then it's like it's like this interesting cycle, and it poses a lot I, of. I thought at the end of Prometheus, like she was like impregnated with mm-hmm. an alien, and like had to like go into like the uh, like the ship's like hospital wing and like cut it out of her. Or some yeah, shit. they they don't follow up with that at all. Like they complete that completely drops off. They just forget. It sounds about like it. it's loosely like following like the entire plot of the first alien movie, which is like they're going to like some planet. Yeah. Yeah. Loosely. Get... Yeah. So eventually the prequels are supposed to tie back around and it's supposed to loop back into alien so that they, I think they want to do one or two more installments, but it, anyway, so it like, it, yeah. So it poses, it poses like a bunch of interesting, like philosophical questions. Um, cause he basically, the, the Android ends up kind of like doing shitty stuff to the, to the engineers, the people who are the original creators. And, he finds out that like he's like this older model and that he was uh, they remade the way that they did it because he was too human and like he was prone to flaws. And like one of the things that he does is he sits there and he looks upon this civilization that's kind of like devoid now. And he quotes the Ozymandias poem uh, basically like look on in despair like I am Ozymandias and uh, look at all my great works. And it's just a statue in the desert, like a broken statue in the desert. There's nothing left. And it's basically that like time ravages on and great works eventually disappear. And that's kind of the gist of it. Like eventually all will be forgotten. And he, he incorrectly quotes like a different, uh, a different poet. He, he says it's Lord Byron, but it was actually Percy Shelley who wrote it. And it just goes to show that he's like still, he's making the same mistake that like humans made when they made him because it's like, Oh, I made you in my image, but like we're flawed beings. And so he thinks he's better, but then he's also flawed himself and he's making these beings that he thinks are better than the original. And it's just like this cycle that spirals down. So it's just like a really interesting concept. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot to unpack in there. Any, any, any thoughts? I know that got like kind of yeah. deep. <laughs> well, yeah, I haven't seen them. So I, <clears throat> I didn't know if there was like, <clears throat> sounds like these are kind of specific examples from the movie, but what, what is like the overarching, like, idea i guess like well i don't want to i don't want to like spoil the movie too hard so like that's the thing but the overarching Sorry. idea is kind of like <laughs> cock block so <laughs> no well, no 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 this is actually so we can carry on from this so um the overarching thing is kind of like uh you, you like the ethical boundary of like uh, of people wanting to play god because we as humans we want to create like an android at some point and it's like, okay, well, clearly this android, and that's something else, like, he starts to, like, develop feelings, and he's, like, pretty human by the end of it, and it's like, at what point does a mach- is a machine, like, considered human? Well, you should watch Westworld, then. Yeah. Because it sounds, like, just, like, the, the plot of Westworld, but probably Westworld, I'm, I'm almost positive Westworld's a lot better in it. Especially the yeah. first two seasons. Yeah, but. probably. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. That's not where I thought that was going at all. Well, that well, there there are mo- multiple other philosophical things in there, but like that's one of the main ones is that. Yeah. When it, does it, an artificial intelligent become like sentient? Yeah, and like, what right do we have to create life or to play God? Because there's always going to be someone else who is want like our creations at some point might want to play God or. Maybe the ones who created us thought that. Oh, yeah. The, the, one of the one of the main questions in it was like uh, in Prometheus, the android asked one of the humans. He's like, well, what do you because they're looking for their creators. And he's like, well, why do you think uh, why do you think your species made me? And the guy smugly because he's like an asshole. He like smugly. He's like playing pool and he throws a ball. He's like, because we could. And then he was like, do you know how disappointing that would be if you talk to your creators and they said the same thing? And. So it's just kind of like furthers the conversation of it's like, okay, well, yeah, like at what point is it cool to play God and is it not? And mm. yeah, so like it was just interesting. And so, yeah, then I guess that kind of brings up like the whole thing, of like artificial intelligence and whatnot. Like at what point does a machine have a soul and like at what point does it not? So. so is it like a soul or you're just saying like it's it's a sentient? Well, yeah, like a, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, in other words, a sentient being that is capable of making its, its own decisions. Transcended being just a machine. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. I've thought about this before. Usually, I don't really think about it that deep, I guess, because that kind of extends the story. But generally, if, when people ask if they created, like, AI that, you know, through the programming eventually, like, can develop, like, positive and negative feelings based on, like, certain mm-hmm. stimuli or whatever... And then obviously if you extended that to like everything that we do, you know, our, our brains are basically just chemical reactions based on things that are happening. So, but I've always thought, 
it's a machine that we created. Like we could get rid of it. Like no questions asked, but yeah, it, yeah, it's interesting to think about whenever you kind of expand it out and think about just kind of how we work. Cause you know, it's like, we think that we're not very machine like, but a lot of it is just like taking in stimuli and well, yeah, we're, we're basically like biomechanical them. machines. Like we are like, we're just organic machines. Yeah. And you know, something hurts like a chemical in your brain causes pain to protect you from things like that. Like, et cetera. Yeah. Like, well, wouldn't you say like maybe I guess to like some extent that a difference would be that we have free will. Whereas like if it's a creation that we made, like, in some way to like service like an Android or like AI is like used to do something for the human race, like in a positive way, but like, that's like their purpose. But until like when they get like the option to like, they kind of like break free and they have their own free will. I feel like that's a, a point where it like turns into where they're not just a machine. Like if they're capable of having their own thoughts and acting on their own thoughts. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's a good, that so like that's something else that kind of happens in it. So like they so d- the model uh, like the android his name's David, but they make a, they mass produce them, and so David's kind of like this like earlier model, and then they have this one named Walter, and then so it's Michael Fassbender playing the same character. They look exactly the same because they're both androids, and the main difference between the two is that they limit yeah like like you were just saying a minute ago. So like they limit the other one's human capacity. So like he can do he has all this knowledge, and he's like super. Uh, yeah, he's just really knowledgeable, but he, his limitation is, is that he is not allowed to, he's like more efficient and he's m- more machine like, but he's not allowed to create anything to keep him from having too many human tendencies. Um, and so like, that's the main divide is that the other one can, and the other one can feel emotion and he can create and destroy. And the other one is like stopped because no matter what, he will be subservient to human wants and needs and desires. Whereas the other one, is his own complete entity. And it's kind of this interesting little contrast between like, even though they're both literally the same like entity, one is more machine and one is more human. So overall is the argument basically like if, if we get to a point to be able to create these androids to this level, you know, it's like, do we have a moral responsibility to implement whatever code or whatever that they cannot feel emotions or something like it, it, it would there be something that we could do to prevent that in order to maintain yeah their machine right I, I i don't know if that like that i guess that's just your own interpretation well, when you of said like it, whether people can play god like playing god would be us creating something that eventually develops its own free will versus it's not playing god if we just create a machine that is highly intelligent that does not have free will or feelings well yeah well, yeah, so, so I guess that, that could be one of the argument points of the movie is that like, so Walter is the other is the other model of David and Walter is basically like, you can tell he maybe slightly feels something, but he can't really do anything about it because of his programming. Like, that's the way it is. And he's like, um, what is, oh yeah, so like the one android says, uh, David, the one that can feel stuff, he was like talking about love or whatnot. And he's like, uh, it's like, how could you say you don't feel love? He's like, you sacrificed your hand to save uh, a human that you care about. He's like, if that's not love, I don't know what is. And he's like, it's a duty because he's an android. Like, he has to protect his job is to protect the humans. So, like, that is like his job. So, it's like the difference between the two, I guess. So, yeah, yeah, I, I don't really. That's something that you could unpack in it. It's like, it's like obviously quite a big question. And if we could get to that, get to that point to make sentient beings and like black mirror tackles this all the time with like the like have you ever seen i'm sure you've seen plenty episodes of black mirror right i haven't seen a ton i've probably seen like a handful yeah well there's there's several episodes that kind of deal with the concept of like uh like duplicates or like simulations that they're these they're they're these own entities that have their own feelings they're basically exact identical copies of you like if you made an exact identical copy of yourself but it's just uh, it's just like ones and zeros. So like, what does it matter if it's literally just like a little it's a copy of me? It's a it's a simulation. So like, who gives a fuck? But it literally it's exactly like you. It feels all of your same feelings and insecurities that you have. It's just trapped in whatever thing that you're putting it through. And it's like, well, at what point is that OK? Like, is that OK or is that not OK? So. Yeah, I. 
just, I guess, knee-jerk reaction would be like, I think it would be okay because it is created. But with the movie, it sounds like they are making the implication that you also were created by someone like, uh, what's the word? Like, what's Elon Musk's big thing? The, uh, like a simulation, like we are a simulation made by someone else. So if that is the case, then it would not be okay. But that kind of hinges on whether or not you think that that has already happened Right. Whatever. Okay. Well, I mean, like, I guess that's a good point. So it's like right now, say some, someone was to tell you, you are in a simulation. Like, none of this is real. Like, you're in a simulation. So, like, does that make all of your emotions and everything that you feel any less real just because you're in a simulated reality? Like, no, to you, it's completely real and you feel all of these things, whether or not you're just programming or not. Like, right. So, like, so, like, and like the possibility we're in a simulation. We don't really know. Like that, that's something else that simulation theory is its own fucking ball game. But so like, yeah, like tomorrow you find out we're all in a simulation. It's like, well, that doesn't make like I still felt those things. I still feel like it's still like a reaction. It's just a highly sophisticated mod module like running through that's, you know, made me feel like this, but I still feel it nonetheless. So just because I'm some other dimension simulation, does that make me, you know, not important or not human in my own right? So it's just like, it's like these really interesting philosophical questions, I guess. Yeah. I've never thought about that way. I mean, it, it's, it is pretty crazy. Like I would say no in that situation because right. you're asking the person that is basically like the test subject and they will always say yes. But like hypothetically, if we came from a creator and I don't know I think I'm kind of blending like a creator, like a spiritual creator versus like physically like people created it. But if they were to create us into a simulation and in this simulation, you know, there's the Holocaust, like people get murdered, raped, brutally assaulted, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Some people just get sick and die. Some people were disabled at birth, like all these things. So if it was set up in this way, then clearly if you were to ask whoever our creator was, they would say that that is okay. Because, yeah, you know, presumably if you are creating it, either you would weed out the possibility of these things happening or you would implement some something in the programming that would pro- prohibit people from doing that or something. But if you ask the people that are going through it, they would say that it is immoral. Right. If you were to ask us right now, like, oh, if you just created this robot, but it feels the same as you and all that, would you be okay with getting rid of it? You know, you might be like, oh, okay. Like, I just created it. It's not me. Yeah. But if you ask the thing, it would probably think the same thing. So it kind of, like, trickles up. Well, right, yeah. And so, like, that's the that's the tricky question about it. And, like, Black Mirror, like I said, they tackle this all the time in a bunch of, bunch of unique ways. Uh, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought on that. But, yeah, I, it was just interesting. Chandler, you have anything to add? You've been quiet over there for a minute. Just kind of a lot to take in or like think about at one time, I guess. I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, it's easy to like kind of think about right now, but it's not such a pressing issue that it's just like not. Well, right. Yeah. It's, it's a lot well, down the low, down the road, but maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Shit gets crazier every year. I mean, That's like true. in the past, like 10 years, I mean, there's just kind of loosely based, but I feel like it's mostly accurate. But like in the past, like 10 to like 20 years, 20 years, at least like our society has advanced more than it has in a thousand years. Like, yeah, with advance. So what's to say what's going to happen in the next 50 years, just as technology advances and gets more powerful. Well, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I mean, it, it's, I think it's like more than that. I don't know if someone has like an actual graph of like. That, that's what I was gonna say. Like I, I don't know. Like a here we go. Like Probably within statistic. the last ten years, it's been more than like the history of human. All right, how do I? How do I right. Google this? What do I type in? Uh, you could say like technical innovations over time or something. I, uh, I feel like you might just get a list of something with that. Yeah, probably. Let's see, that's a tough Google technical search. innovation graph. Uh, All right, we took a short break there to go to the bathroom, and we are doing something special right now. It looks like both of my uh, guests right now are going to do a shot of Everclear to continue the conversation at max drunk capacity. Uh, Cheers, guys. All right. 
for the Modern Goonies podcast. That is unfortunate. I do not envy you. We don't fuck around on this podcast. We take shots of Everclear and nothing else. Oh, holy fuck. <laughs> oh, I've never done that before. That's fucked. <laughs> that's, that's the most painful sh- <laughs> shot I've ever taken. I've never done I had that trouble before. Breathing that's fucked. It, like, like air hurt. Don't like that. <laughs> uh, oh. Harrison did wow. the same thing one time. He was like, he wanted to, we were about to do a podcast. He's like, I need something to like get me feeling buzz pretty quick. I'm like, I got oh. some Everclear. And he like, he took it and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll be honest. I hated that. That was awful. Dude, the heartburn is instant. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. He said immediate heartburn. Oh my God. It's been a long time since I've shot Everclear. So I don't. I'm ashamed of myself for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on camera too. You can watch it forever. I know. Second, second coaster. Is there another one? <laughs> Zach just passes out. <laughs> he just uses the coaster as a pillow. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> dude, that, dude, that absinthe was fucking like. Well, absinthe is taking it, a it, shot of Malibu versus yeah. that shit. Well, absinthe actually tastes good. Like ones that I, I like had. Black licorice. Well, the ones that I had at the bar in Colorado was perfectly well, fine. Well, if it's like there's a certain way to drink absinthe too. It's like you're supposed to do it with like sugar cubes or like some shit too. He brewed it right. It was like an absinthe bar, so like they made it the correct way, and it tasted. Well, I don't think you're just supposed to, to shoot it. Well, no, I don't. It was. I mean, it was a glass of absinthe. Right. <clears throat> well, I don't think shooting is the proper way. There is no proper way to drink Everclear uh, straight. Uh, yeah, that, that that's might be should be illegal or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last time I took a shot of Everclear was when Final Fantasy VII Remake came out, and then the time before that was never. I think. Oh yeah. I could have fooled me on the Kingdom Hearts uh, night. No, oh, that was just straight Jim Beam Green Apple. <laughs> that Christ. is my fucking crib tonight. That sucks. Um, okay. All right, so we'll we'll dive into it after yeah, all of that. It. So we, we were trying to look at a little graph of innovation over the years to figure out which decade was like the best, and I couldn't fucking I couldn't find <laughs> the correct thing. It was just bringing up random shit. <laughs> Uh, I just keep looking at his head. Yeah, I know. He, he's miserable. <laughs> Don't do that, dude. He looks, yeah. <laughs> Don't do that at home. He looks like he's in pain. <laughs> That's fucked. Uh, so, yeah, I couldn't find anything on that, but, I mean, God we can damn. keep talking. Take we can the, keep talking from take there. Take a vapor if it makes it feel better. The buzz is immediate. Yeah. All right, let's get this shit fucking cracking, dude. So we couldn't find the graph. We couldn't find the graph, yeah. no. Um, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, basically no. We we've discovered we have innovated more. Um, and it's like since the nineteen since nineteen hundred than we have in pretty much all of you. I know that I'm pretty sure that's a fact. Like since nineteen hundred. Well, that's when the industrial revolution happened. The industrial like, we yeah, and then cars were invented like nineteen oh four or something. Right. I think is when Ford. Well, the industrial revolution happened in like late seventeen hundreds. I think no, eighteen hundreds. I think. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's 1800s. Oh, All right, let's look that one. We can look that I, I'm, one up. I'm fairly certain it's like, it wasn't 1900s. I think that was the end of the Industrial Revolution. I think I it was like 1880s, Re- like through the 90s. Yeah, I thought I thought it was like mid-1800s because then the Industrial Revolution it was after the, the cotton gin. I can't remember. It was after the Civil War. Okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, between Sometime between 1820 and 1840. Oh, no shit? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. In the period... Oh, it's uh, it started 1760... And then it ended sometime around 1820 or 1840. What started it? Wasn't there like one invention that... The 1760s. Was it the See, I was right. 1700s. That does not sound right to me. In the period of... Uh, wasn't it like the cotton gin or something like that? Didn't that start it? Yeah, that's what I said. I think it was, but it depends on how they're defining the start of it. Well, it incur- well uh, the main thing here, it looks like... All right, so... Uh, that's it. I'm about to have to do some... Ha- Googling a meal. It transitioned from hand hand production methods over to machine, new chemical manufacturing, iron production processes, and the increased use of steam power and water power. Uh, and then a couple <clears> other <throat> things in here. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think we're I think we were probably thinking of it from I think people kind of consider the the cotton gin or whatever as being the start, but it, yeah. in general, they're kind of saying... I got 1790. Maybe I was just off 100 years. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. That's all right. Yeah, so, like, that's when... But, um, so, yeah, so well, since since the year 1900, innovation has exploded, mainly um, <clears throat> right around the time of, like, World War II, uh, the, like, with the invention of, what was it, like, the, com- like the computer transistor or whatever the fuck it was? Like, since <clears throat> then innovation has absolutely exploded. It's like, it was like sometime in the forties. Well, then I feel like even with like 
the invention of the internet, it's, I mean, I can't put a statistic to it, but like doubled or tripled or even quadrupled. Yeah. Since then. And ever since then, it just like every year, it just gets incredibly better. And like there's shit that comes out, like I can't believe. And then I look back like 20 years ago and we have like fucking like Tamagotchis or something like that. We fucking play with it. Like this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And then 15 years later, you have a fucking supercomputer in your hand. Right. <coughs> God damn. Like, like a computer my that... My throat is still like... It's like... <laughs> it feels like there's something stuck in my throat. <laughs> I think like part of my urethra got cooked or something. <laughs> your, uh, <laughs> your urethra got cooked? Oh, yeah. Well, you feel like, <laughs> Yeah, that too. That too. Damn, he's <laughs> fucked. Oh, my God. Your goose is cooked. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know how to follow that up. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> innovation. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll, we'll go ahead and jump over to another topic. Uh, who wants to go? You or I feel like yours is a good segue, right? Yeah, it's more. Yeah, it probably it's more based. natural. Yeah. <clears throat> well, sort of. Well, so I think you do a better job of explaining it, and I just kind of like I like to talk about it. But if you could kind of briefly explain the Fermi paradox. Okay. Well, Zach. Uh, bandages up his urethra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to need a few minutes <laughs> before I start talking again. Um, okay, so the Fermi Paradox. Uh, this one's really interesting. I really like the, I really like talking about the Fermi Paradox. Um, so basically, we it, it kind of stands the reason that... I'm getting PTSD. It's just, just crazy. Um, so there's this thing in science, and it's called the Drake Equation. And the Drake Equation basically predicts the statistical probability of life in the universe. So for the chances, so if life evolved the exact same way that it did on earth, there are, there's a formula for the chance that it would happen in other places in the universe. Um, so that number's pretty high. There's like, like millions of other civilizations that could have thrived the same way that we did. Um, so, and the universe is billions of years old. So it would stand to reason that we should see other civilizations somewhere out in the universe. Uh, but we don't. And because if we if it stands to reason that we develop technology the same way that we do, at some point in our development, we will be able to colonize our solar systems and then eventually other galaxies if we continue on technological progress and it doesn't slow. Well, if that's the case and the universe is billions of years old and we had civilizations out there starting thousands of years before us, we should be able to see it in some regard somewhere. But we, we don't at all like there, it's not it's radio silence out there. Um, and so the Fermi paradox is a way kind of to describe why that is. There's a couple of different answers for it, but it's basically like we should see all, we should see evidence of alien life somewhere out there, but we don't. So th- there's a couple of different answers to it and we can kind of get, we can go into that a little bit, but the, the main one, uh, the, the, the main, the main couple are basically that we are either the first to like in all of the universe, we're the first to get this far in technology where we can send shit out into space and, uh, you know, uh, communicate effectively and, uh, colonize the moon and all the stuff that we can do now. Uh, so we're either the first or there is this, uh, this great filter and the great filter is basically, it, it is a point either in our past that we've already gotten to, or a point that we've yet to hit yet that, all advanced life eventually cannot pass, um, which means that life would never be able to develop to go out and colonize other areas of the star system because they hit this point to where they're just unable to do so anymore. Like a, like a glass wall. It's a barrier. A yeah. Bar- so, yeah. Okay. So they call it the, so they call it the great filter. And so okay, there looking. are some. So the, the 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 idea is that we've either already passed it, which means we've passed the great filter where the first of our kind, where the first advanced life form to do that. Which, well, you, you, you mean like we haven't reached a filter yet? No, no, no. We've already passed the filter, and we're the first to ever do it. I thought the the barrier was that we can't go past our planet to colonize. No, no. Well, well, well Hank. So there's a couple of different answers to the barrier. So the barrier is <clears throat> the barrier is just the, is me. the barrier is a metaphys <laughs> is like a metaphorical line of like this this part that's it like almost impossible to pass. Like a peaking point. Yes, of, it, it's like a peaking point, and you can't get anything past it. So. Okay. The idea, so the one theory is that we've already hit our barrier and we managed to break past it. We managed to do the impossible. And a lot of people think that if that is the case, it would be 
Um, the impossible being leaving the orbit no, of our planet. No, the, the, the impossible. No, just in general, like like uh, say life forming. Life, right, yeah, right. Life developing. Like like okay, life developing. Okay, okay, so okay. like a lot of people think that if that is the case, and we've already passed the the, major, the great filter, the great barrier, it would be in mitosis and uh, meiosis, where like the cell divides on itself right. or whatever, which is what I think in science is like super improbable. Like it's not something that happens often. And so they think that, like, if we have passed our barrier, that might be it. Like, we're the first to ever fucking go past that point of just being, like, microscopic organisms and we fucking develop on and become these advanced life forms. So that's one. Um, But then there's the bleak outlook of we just haven't hit the barrier yet, which means that we get to this point, like, a lot of civilizations get to the point and they start to try and develop their own, like, hyperdrives and they all blow themselves up because it's like trying to harness like the energy of a black hole and they fucking destroy themselves. Or, um, you can, you can never get to a point of advanced technology because comet, because the universe is crazy and comets fucking pound <clears throat> your planet and wipe you out and set you back to the stone age. And you just keep resetting yourself and you can never get to the being super advanced or it's a gamma ray blast or whatever the fuck it is. And that there's this certain barrier that no one can ever pass to like colonize other planets or other solar systems. You said that's like the bleak outlook is uh, that we haven't hit the barrier yet. Well, I, I mean, I don't. I'm not well versed in this, but just from hearing it, it sounds like that might not be super bleak. I feel like it's bleak thinking we've already passed that, like we've peaked. But Mm-mm. no, like so no, the, no, no, the no. barrier is if if we haven't reached our barrier yet, it means that we might get we might advance tenfold of what we have now and we might even be on the cusp of being able to visit other places and an asteroid hits us and destroys all of the technology we built up that would be our filter right oh, the barrier the barrier okay. is the point you can't pass like it, okay so you're saying the barrier is like some kind of like different event or uh, some catastrophic event or something that something. causes us from reaching that point. Okay. Right. So exactly. I, I, so if I, we've I, already I, reached it, then no other life on earth has developed and we made it into yeah. mitosis. We might very well be we, the first to do it. Okay. Now, was, there, there, yeah. I, I'm with you now. I was thinking it was like more along the lines of like, I was thinking more optimistic. Like if we have passed that barrier, then why can't yeah. we go colonize if we've yeah. already like, well, in through. theory, we would be able to, and then eventually, our if, if that is the barrier, happen. then we will do yeah. It eventually. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it, so that's the thing. We've already hit our barrier. We're, we're fucking golden. We can do it. Well, then and, I would like to think that we yeah. have hit the barrier. Well, so if well, I'm being yeah. Optimistic. So a I lot of too, the a lot of the things of the Fermi paradox are pessimistic. Unfortunately, uh, most of them are. Uh, there are there are a couple different explanations though for why we don't see things in the universe. Um, outside of what we currently have. And, and one of the main, one of the answers to the Fermi paradox is that the universe is just so fucking big well, that th- w- there might be several civilizations out there that have done what we've done. And we just literally, we cannot fucking see them at all because they're well, so far away. Well, that's what I was thinking. Cause I don't know. I'm not super well versed in like science and space and physics and all of this, but isn't the only other galaxy that like we can view in some kind of, aspect with like our kind of technology is the andromeda galaxy i think we can see a lot but i think the andromeda is the closest one like andromeda is the closest galaxy but i think we if, can see several others if i'm not mistaken i think there's like a kind of like quote or like a metaphor that <clears throat> excuse me like if you go to like a beach and like every like grain of sand would yep. be like a galaxy like within our universe that's like that's your universe is like the grains of sand like on a beach or something i feel like if you believe that way like there's so much out there like you yeah i mean obviously in our lifetime there's not going to be a point where we can like see everything but i don't think there's ever going to be a point well, I, I mean there might be but there's not a point to where you can view everything that's going on within our conceivable universe right i feel like it's pretty ignorant to think too that if you think you're the only sentient life out there when there's so much else out there that we yeah. j- just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Or it's not possible. Well, like, exactly. I, and, and that's one of, that's one of the answers to the <clears throat> Fermi paradox. It is literally exactly what you're saying is that right, I'm a physicist. Yeah. That, yeah. There we go. You know, everything. All right. Um, yeah. It, right is that physics. it's just so like, and it, it's no, you know, it, it's no stretch to say that the universe is literally incomprehensively large. We cannot fathom how fucking big it is. There's, there, there's no way. We are a grain of sand on top of a grain of sand. Like, we are fucking... You know, this kind of, like, just very briefly on that, it kind of reminds me of... It's like, 
you know, sometimes when you have like very vague memories, like when you were really little and yeah. like you barely remember them. I remember whenever I was little, like probably like six or seven or maybe even younger than that. And I was like learning about like planets and you have like the, uh, I don't even remember what the acronym would be to like memorize like the planets in our galaxy and like trying to think about like the distance of like miles. Like I remember there was one point where I was like driving or I was riding with my family to like Rockwall or something. I'm like thinking, I'm like, okay, this is like 20, like 30 miles or something. The moon is X amount of miles away. Jupiter's like X amount of miles away. And like my small mind, I was like trying to comprehend like the universe and like how like far like distances between planets. And it literally hurt my head. Like when I was like so little, like trying <laughs> yeah. to like comprehend and think about it. And just like to exasperate that, like beyond just our galaxy to like even another galaxy or these countless infinite other galaxies that we can't even see or will ever see. It's like, it's well, crazy to like, just oh, yeah. to even try to just, just to even like try and like fathom the idea of it. It's just baffling. It's just so hard to comprehend. Yeah. Well, I think it might be interesting too, is that it, you can kind of tie this into what we were talking about before. Like either if the, if there is a creator or if there is a simulation, what if whenever, <clears throat> whoever decides to make the simulation, they I- intentionally isolate us from ever being able to view other civilizations that they've created. To so view that we, other simulations? Yeah, so that we think that we are the only... Like, right. basically, they, because in well, this that's situation... That's to think about, but... Well, it is, but in this case, we, we focus on our world. And our world, you know, in the beginning, we think of our world as the earth and then we learn of other planets and now we recognize that as this is our whatever this is our solar system and then this is our universe well, maybe our universe is kind of like Chandler saying maybe our universe is like a one inch by one inch pallet of sand in the grand beach and maybe yeah. maybe like this is our universe as we know it and there are other universes out there that are I, mean, I guess maybe this is kind of the parallel maybe this would be like a parallel or string theory thing or parallel universe thing but there are other universes out there that we can't access or see and maybe that was intentional like maybe we have been put so far away from everything that we or there could be like that those if there is other life in these other galaxies they could be thinking the exact same thing at the same time too right regardless of simulation or not but they don't have the technology or they haven't Uh, advanced you you, you have touched on literally two answers to the permi paradox on on your own it's time to go it, back to school it, boys yeah independent thought that that is literally another one is that and well it and it kind of touches on this is that there might be other people out there just like us who are sending out their own signals right they're they're sending out stuff like crazy radio waves or whatever they're trying to communicate with us and they just can't because like we don't know how to pick it up because the, because we're humans and we've evolved in our own way that like we're, no, we're like we just hear a random radio signal it's like oh that's just like the universe doing weird shit and like we have no idea that people have been trying to communicate with us this entire time, and then vice versa, they can't understand the signals that we've sent out or the the, the little golden disc that we've fucking thrown out there. Like it will never reach them. So like they're just sitting there thinking like we're the only ones. Yeah, here. we're we're the and only everyone, ones. We're trying to communicate. We and every, can't. And everyone in their own isolated universe, regardless <clears throat> of how many it is, is thinking the same thing. Yeah, that we're the only ones here. Exactly. When in yeah. actuality, there's thousands or millions of universes or planets that hold life that are trying to accomplish the same goal of communicating with other Mm -hmm. galaxies but just can't do it well yeah well the well that doesn't break down the fermi paradox though right because in that situation if there are other planets that are still trying to reach us then in theory technically they might not have reached their filter yet right so i mean and john's John's in like if you had a universe crazy far away and they're thinking the same thing well clearly they have not been able to accomplish getting yeah. to where we are so they might still be trying to reach their filter because if the if the great filter is true then there won't be other universes because we are the only ones that have done it right like the filter uh, the, you, no. can, you can have independent filters for each civilization well technically so technically the great filter is just like one big idea of something that no civilization at any point can pass 
It's it, the great filter. Oh, that's right, it, the that's great right, filter right. is just like a metaphorical idea. Yeah, that's right. So that's like right. you're right on on like so like on ours, it's like oh okay, like there's this concept of like uh, of uh, space junk, and that could be our great filter is that we can that we uh, there's so much space junk that's constantly like. So I, I, have you guys heard about this before? What space junk? You know, like, like, yeah, like the, the like threat literal. that that our own space junk poses. Of like blocking our ozone or like no blocking our own entry back into space. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So like like about. on our civilization because we didn't take care of that that could be our filter is that we can't get back into space because we fucking trapped ourselves on the planet. That sounds most plausible with the way humans are already act. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not most plausible, <clears throat> but I wouldn't like put it as like out there like the well, way I, we well, already. Yeah. No. I don't it's think, not that out there. I think it's out there because if we had the capability to go to other solar systems at the ready and we just couldn't get through our space junk we presumably at that point we would be able to have a way to have clear s- our yeah junk. exactly have well maybe have some technology to get rid of the space junk okay well i was thinking well, well, along the, prob- the lines the, of like well the problem is is that the space junk like even something that is like incredibly small it's moving at such fast speeds that if it makes contact with something like a satellite or a spaceship it will fucking destroy it on impact i was just thinking more along the lines that i don't think it's not plausible for us at the at the rate that we have waste developing on our own planet that we're not just going to send it into fucking space because we don't give a shit and we're just like just fucking send that shit to the fucking asteroid belt right. who gives a shit well well when he says space junk space junk is literally like our own satellites because we have there are so oh, many satellites okay yeah. uh, see up I there. see I thought well it was well, the, well hang on so space junk this is a couple different things so when when things are so when like spacecrafts are sent into the atmosphere and some of them like. Uh, explode or some of them they, they send off like their own parts and they're just kind of like floating out into they, space. They like break off like their fuel pods or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Well, those get caught in orbit in a certain right. way that they're constantly spinning through orbit and like uh, so there have already been multiple cases of space junk destroying satellites that we have. Well, then when one satellite gets destroyed, it they just, immediately become because of like all the parts that are just flying combines through. and becomes like a like so a it's now it's now effect. it's a cloud of space junk that is hurling through the space and hurling through space the and more destroys shit we more. Send into space, it has it, a higher chance. Of it's exponential and growing. It, yeah, it's a snowball it be, effect. Yeah. yeah, it becomes exponential. And so like okay, so the thing is, is that at some point there will be so much of it going so fast. That if we anything we would try to send into orbit, it would destroy immediately because there's so much of it. Yeah. I, well, what the, at that? That's point? a real issue currently. But in this hypothetical, I think at that point we would have some way. Well, right. Well, well either that. way, well, either way, what we were talking about was basically that. Like, so, like that might be our filter. We maybe we'll never be able to get past that because we, we do it too early, and it's like fuck, we can't leave our atmosphere anymore, so we can't colonize anything but Earth. But like someone else's great filter might be they tried to harness black hole energy and they fucking destroyed themselves, or they couldn't get past, they developed nukes because they figured out how to split an atom and they blew themselves up. They weren't as like temperamental as we were about it. And they fucking destroyed themselves. Could still be our, uh, yeah. barrier. Like, like there's so many, there's so many different well, things. That would be the, the, that would be the pessimistic approach is that that could be so like, if our filter is in the future, that's bad for us. Yeah. That the only thing that will, if, if we were to, to continue on to this point of, colonizing the galaxy or whatever we or the universe we would have to have already hit our filter couldn't you even like i mean i don't know just might be talking on my ass but couldn't you theoretically put that metaphorical filter back to like the big bang even or like the creation of our universe because the way that i am interpreting it right now is like if we've hit our great barrier it is how we came to be through mitosis or meiosis where the splitting of cells and that we have just gradually evolved mm-hmm. into human beings but couldn't you even maybe put that before that like uh no that? and and the reason you can't is because the idea of the fermi paradox is to explain why we can't see other intelligent life so it, it okay. has it has nothing to do with the big bang it's just why don't we see other people like us if we're if this universe is so old like billions of years old, why don't we see evidence of other people being able to colonize their solar systems? Because they should have had plenty of time to be able to figure that out by now. Well, I mean, the filter also only applies to like developed sentient civilizations. Well, pretty much. Yes. Well, well, that's what I was going to say. It has to, it only, yeah, yeah. no, it does. That's what (laughs) I was going to say too, because there's no way to, if you go on the assumption that there are other galaxies or planets out there that have, sentient life or potential for sentient life there's nothing 
that says that they evolve at the rate that we do. So like, I don't know how there's that too. I don't know how exactly long, like our galaxy has been around like whatever billion years, like maybe cause in the past, what, like, I don't know, like 20,000 or even before I don't know that, when humans, whenever that time was yeah. until it got to here, 250,000 years, humans have been around. Okay. Let's say that 250,000 years. There's nothing that says maybe, a galaxy or a planet in another galaxy light years away that we can't comprehend evolves in a million years as opposed to our 250,000 yeah, years. The, so they could just be behind. Well, no, but the, so the point of this is also that if you're assuming that the universe is so large, you, that there's you, something that's before, or there's something that came before us that is evolved past us. That's older. Well, yeah. So like you're saying they might evolve at a slower speed. There might be a universe out there, or uh, not a universe, but a solar system out there where they evolve at a slower speed. But the likelihood is equal that there are some that evolve at a faster speed, and some who have been evo- who started evolving quicker and have been evolving longer than us. Well, I feel like that's and just so that it's the, infinite. Well, that's what I was gonna say. I feel like that's just the infinite scope of space. Correct. In well, that's the, the whole universe. point. Well, of yeah, yeah. That, that's why. Yeah, that, that's why. So, if it's so infinite, why has no one gotten to that point yet? Yeah. Why don't we see any evidence? Fuck, I don't know. Man. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's, yeah that, that's <laughs> that, that poses the that's question. Why so it's cool. a lot of people, like I said, they take the pessimistic approach and probably the most pessimistic, pessimistic approach that I've seen is um, basically the fact if we go to another planet and we discover basic life form in, in any regard, pretty much, they say some people think we're fucked. They, they think if we discover life in any form, uh, like say we go to Mars and we discover it or, or another solar system or whatever that that means that we just haven't hit our barrier yet. Well, wh- why is that true? Like it, because the barrier is only true for c- civilizations, correct? Uh, or no, it's well, not technically because if, it, if yeah. that's our filter for cell division. Yeah. Clearly we weren't a civilization. Well, well, that, well that's the thing. So then like if we find basic, complex life form on other planets that haven't got to our point yet. That means they passed whatever the great barrier would have been of, you know, myos- meiosis or mitosis. So we know that the... Well, no, my- mitosis, I think, and it's been a long time since I've taken high school uh, biology, but I think okay. mitosis is for plants, cell division, and mm. meiosis is, is like sexual production of cells. Yeah, well, well either way, if, if we find... So, so, so one of the things was, so like even meiosis or mitosis, the, 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 I guess I didn't explain that far enough either. It, it was basically... Is it meiosis or meiosis? It's, a, it's an remember. M-E-I, so I think it's... Yeah. I'm not going to act like I know biology all that well. These are just things I've heard about. I haven't about taken it. a biology course yeah. since like so, junior yeah, college. Um, so anyway, so, so basically the point of that was to say that like life itself might be extremely rare. Like because they can't get past that point. So complex life might be very very rare because it can't pass these certain biological points that we have passed so if we go and we find complex life that's just not sentient on other planets or maybe is like kind of sentient on other planets it means it it, it means there's a good chance that we just haven't hit the barrier yet I, I, yeah no yeah that yeah. makes perfect sense it it's fucking weird i mean obviously we haven't gotten to that point i mean we're going through some weird shit now with unidentified fucking craft that could do stuff that we don't think is possible. The, yeah. The, uh, the, the confirmed UFOs by the U S government. Is it confirmed or did they, I, I don't no, know. They confirmed this. it. Yeah. They, 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 they basically say, they said it's a, like a U it's an unidentified flying object. Okay. Like, well, I, I know, I know, the the, I know the up. video like in question of like there, I think they were like Navy pilots or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just didn't know like what the government did with it. Well, yeah, the, well, well, the, it came back up recently because the U.S. government confirmed that these were legitimate, authentic, unidentified, yeah, fl- are they, tapes. Okay, was, yeah, because they, they surfaced originally back in like October. That's when people first put it out, and it I, thought was like, it was a, I thought it was a long time ago. Well, the, the, some of the videos themselves uh, were like like one is from not that long ago, and one is from like two thousand four. Okay. Um, but yeah. I, the video started circulating back in October. And it wasn't until just recently that the U.S. government, like, confirmed that, yes, those are unidentified. We don't exactly know what those are. Dude, who the fuck knows? It's just, it's a lot to unpack. Yeah. So, like, the Fermi Paradox, it, it's fun. It, I really, I like thinking about it, but it, it like, uh, the thing that I don't like is, is that if you think about it too hard and too much, it can kind of pose, like, a small little existential crisis 
and it's like, oh shit, that's fucking, that's kind of crazy to think about. So, I feel like it can cause that, but in like the grand scheme of things, the odds of you like experiencing your this barrier or wall that you hit like is so small that it's not going to happen. Oh, well, yeah, you know, like you yourself won't, but it's like the idea of knowing. So say like we could confirm the great barrier, whatever the fuck it was, the idea of knowing we will never like, no matter how much time passes, be able to progress past this certain point because of X, Y, or Z. It it doesn't matter. Like that is just kind of depressing to know, to know that your civilization or your species peaks at some point well yeah it's like okay regardless like i'm gonna yeah it's like i'm gonna die in 20 years it's like okay but like everyone like my whole species my whatever it will never be able to progress past this one point like that's depressing to know well you know and kind of that's what i was talking about with maybe we were created with the intention of not being able to do that or not being able to access those things because it creates these issues like yeah if it if it was just us in the universe then we don't have to worry about not reaching other things in the universe but i mean obviously because we don't know that and we know it's so large we're still gonna have these issues but it's like almost like i wonder it's like if we knew there was life established but we knew there was absolutely no way that we could reach them or even communicate with them from where we were, I think that would be even shittier because it's like, wouldn't you want to know like what's going on? Like it would change everything. Well, it would just, it would propose another challenge that we would want to face and then not be able to do so. So yeah, I think it would be more frustrating for sure. Yeah. Whereas like right now it's literally just like up in the air, like is there or isn't there? We just flat out don't know because we don't have the technology or the information available to us at this certain point to be able to make that determination but yeah you're right if we did know then it'd be like we would always want to go there we would want to see what it's like 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 we have to fucking we want to meet them so badly but we just can never can it's like being it's literally like being star-crossed lovers it would fucking it would blow do you think though maybe like if just hypothetical like if something were to happen where we were able to access like transmissions or like radio waves of something that's theoretically proves that there's some kind of other intelligent life that we can't reach that might might be like something that kind of brings like humanity together in a sense to like try and reach a common goal of trying to reach this other form of intelligence yeah and through and through collective efforts we might be able to but as like split up as we are with our own individual like programs and ideas and like trying to reach different goals as nations we won't be able to, but maybe as a collective planet or society, we could. Well, t- I think technically for the Fermi paradox, if if we were to find out there was sentient developed life on another planet, that would wouldn't that almost confirm that we have already passed our filter? Because if there is life on that other planet, that that means life could develop everywhere else, and the yeah, chances no, that if, if we if we discovered another incredibly sentient life force that has in some way colonized another planet. Or no, not not even, like, let's say they are, like, in Earth. Like, they are just on their own planet. Mm. Well, so, you know, we're talking about the infinite nature of the universe. If we see a planet that has developed life, well, then the chances that there isn't life out there that is far more advanced than even them or us is huge. And you would think that at some point one of those would be able to reach us. But I, I well, I got I me, mean, I guess that's the kind of the whole point of the Well, well, yeah. So, so like the Fermi paradox kind of centers a lot around the idea of intergalactic colonization. That, that, that's one, of, that's one of the things that it kind of, it hinges on inherently because it, 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 uh, and I think that's because of what we've seen in our own human technological innovation that at some point it's natural to assume that we're going to have to, we either, either have to, or we're just out of basic curiosity because we're humans want to go, and start to colonize other places. I think it'll be more out of necessity versus curiosity. Well, yeah. So like, so, so like the idea yeah. is that if we as humans have the desire or the necessity to do that, then there will be plenty of other civilizations that will also have the same necessity or desire, which therefore so maybe over time, like thousands and thousands of years, like these 
potential colonies or civilizations just keep growing and expanding that they have through necessity or whatever means they have to venture out to other planets to yeah. explore and then ours is doing the same thing and so eventually through these in potentially infinite number of sentient colonies of people or whatever are trying to expand that we will eventually meet at some point well yeah and then well, well yeah and that's the thing is that like we ex people just based on statistical probability expect that but so far we've seen nothing and that's the thing that causes the concern that's the thing that comes up with the, the idea of the great barrier and, and all of that because like just sheer like straight up statistics wise we expect that to be the case but we don't we don't see it at all like we see nothing of that we have received no transmissions we received like we when we look out in our like super advanced technology looking out into the universe we see nothing we see no indications of anything even slightly non uh organic like we don't see anything synthetic in the universe like it, it's all just natural it's all like the wild we we see nothing it's fucking rocks and shit yeah yeah I, so we don't we don't see anything and that th that's why it poses the question of all of, of the things that we've been talking about for the last like 30 minutes is because since we don't see that well why don't we see that well it's it's kind of i've been thinking about too if you this is kind of separate from the Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox in this situation kind of is still upheld. But if you think about it from like a, a, a God or creator or simulation or whatever perspective, if you had civilization on another planet and presumably like we, we understand at least, you know, from what we understand about stars, there's a certain life expectancy of stars and, you know, we know that our star is going to live for a certain amount of time. And then it's going to, I mean, anything, Supernova. yeah, anything within in range of it is going to be completely destroyed. Yeah. So there is an inherent need. Maybe that's our barrier. Right. Well, that, that might be. But so, yeah, the for, for the Fermi paradox, maybe that is like maybe no one has been able to outpace the life has been able to develop that technology within the lifetime of the star system that, right. that they are required that make, to be that near. Makes sense. So that's like an idea, but just from like a statistical perspective, like if every single solar system is basically bounded, like if you have life on any solar system, it is bounded by the life of the star because if the star explodes, you lose all progress. So if everyone has a necessity to outlive and outperform the star, then if there is civilizations out there, they know that too. And so it's almost like if you have an infinite number of civilizations with an infinite number of stars, why hasn't one of those infinite civilizations outpaced the life of their star and has colonized other, other planets? Right. Like, like yeah. That seems improbable. Like wh if that's the case... At some point, why has no one been able to develop the technology fast enough to colonize? Because it's a necessity. You have to colonize or you will be destroyed. Yeah. So why hasn't that happened? Or, well, there's also this idea of, a, I don't know if you ever heard of Dyson Spears. Um, so I can't remember who it is. Somebody came up with the idea of like there's different levels of civilization. There's like level one, level two, level three. Yeah, uh, I've, I've heard of Yeah, that. and so like one of the, one of the levels, I and this, this is all... Give me a brief... Okay, so this is this is all completely theoretical, um, like just stuff that we've created. So basically, they classify like I think level one is like us, like advanced life forms that can create sophisticated technology. Now I could be completely wrong on this, but this is just what I understand. Uh, level two is being able to harness. You are pretty much in control of your planet and your and your star that you have in your solar system. So like you can That's level two, yeah. Jesus Christ, what's level five? Uh, well, no, there's only three. There's only three. <laughs> <laughs> level five is just God. That's so. That's all that is. Uh, so then, like level two is you're able to completely harness the energy of like your planet and like your star system. And like uh, science has kind of created this idea of a Dyson sphere, which is basically enveloping uh, enveloping a star with like all of these uh, things that basically dra not drain it, but use its energy to just completely power the planet entirely and just to harness the energy yeah basically yeah basically the harness the energy of the fucking of the star and then they're able to control like the weather in some degree like it's all this crazy shit but that's like level two and then level three is 
harnessing that, like being completely in control of the entire solar system. So like us being in control of every planet that's in our, so our, in our own solar system, that would be like a level three, but we never see anything past level one. Or is level three solar system or galaxy? I think, Oh, well, okay. See, this they, is where I could fuck up. So yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know exactly. Uh, but one of, yeah, one of the two, it's like, because if you're in a solar system and you can control the su- the star within the solar system, <laughs> it, it's, like it's could, pretty, the, yeah. you could, control everything that orbits that star in that solar yeah. system. Or it yeah. would be like moot at that point because you like that is the, the clearly that the is largest yeah. source. See of see like I don't know why don't we why don't we go ahead yeah. and look up like levels of civilization. Jesus, uh, I've learned so much in the past forty five minutes. This is one yeah, of my this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. I I love talking about the Fermi paradox. I think I'm it's honestly, so never heard it. it's it's probably one of my just default like introspective talks because it's just so so I've never heard. I've it. never heard of it. Well, I remember tonight. the first time you and I talked about it. We were on like your deck at uh, at your house, like with your mom, like your mom's house, and we just talked about it for hours. And like you didn't understand it at first, and you were like, "Well, it could just be this." And then like I remember after you and I talking about it for like quite a while, you're like, "Oh, so like our great, we might not have fucking hit the barrier yet." And you're like, "Holy shit!" And like it blew your it, mind. It's like a like, Twilight Zone yeah. episode. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Um, planetary civilization can use and store all of the yeah. energy. Okay, so I was already fucking wrong on this. Fucking uh, no. Well, you're you're kind. I was I was on the same track. So can use and store all of the. So the level one, you can use and store all of the uh, available energy on your own planet. Type two civilization is a stellar civilization. Uh, you can use and control all of the, the energy within your planetary system, so your solar system. And then type three civilization is called a galactic civilization, and you can control the energy to the scale of your entire galaxy that you reside in. So the Milky Way for us. Uh, so obviously we don't see either of type one or type two. So as far as can stand, or to even re- type one. As like, far as we can stand to reason, well, but so like we've. I feel like we're in the middle of type one. Well, well, uh, so uh, I think I would need a little bit more definition on this. Like, does that mean that what is energy uh, available on this planet or entail? Yeah. Or is that literally the energy of the planet? Like within like the, the core? core? Well, well yeah. Know. Yeah. So like you would be able to like harness the energy of the core. You'd be able to like so predict, we're not level one. predict and con- no, we're not, not even tech, not a technical sale. We're not le- type one civilization either. What is this called? Car- um, the card. No. Yeah. What did Artichev? you call it? Are you just called it like planetary or what scale? I just called it like uh, levels of civilization. No, you call no. You said okay. something. No, it, you called it something else. The, uh, the something theory or something or. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. Either, it, it, Kardash. Kardash. What the fuck? What, what did you say, Zach? You can you say it, right? Yeah. Kardash. Kardash. Okay, there we go. Kardash. Kardash. Kardash is something else though. Uh, Let me strike it from the tape. Yeah. But. Sounds rough. So we're not even, yeah, so we're not even type one because like type one can like control its own weather and shit like that. From what I understand, like you're able to predict weather patterns or have these devices that can like mitigate all like tornadoes and bullshit. So like we can't even do that. I can't even really like fathom like what you do with like the energy at like the core of the planet. I don't know. Uh, The the fucking sun. Oh, no, no, no. You were, I think you talked about the Dyson Sphere. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Dyson, Dyson Sphere is something that would be used to harness the energy of your stellar civilization right here, the planetary system, because you'd be able to harness the energy of the sun. So the Dyson yeah, so like, Sphere is like it, some it, part of a type surround the sun with like yeah. a bunch of so, solar panels so here, or something. So here, I'll look up a Dyson and, Sphere for you. Uh, so a lot of what we're talking about has been covered by this one group, and I've mentioned them on the podcast before, but they're called Kyrgyzstan, uh, and then Dash in a nutshell. And they, they cover a lot of shit like this. And they, they go into pretty good depth. They, they've covered the space junk thing. They've covered the Fermi paradox. They've covered Dyson spheres. They've covered parallel universes. And it's very in- infographic and it's very uh, educational. And it's really, it's really cool. I would recommend looking that up for anyone who's curious. You might need to provide a spelling on that one. Uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> that's why I said just look up like in a nutshell on like YouTube. Dyson's... Dyson, Dyson Shear. Shear. God damn it. Fucking what the vacuums. fuck happened? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, what is it called? Kyrgyzstan? Kyrgyzstan in a nutshell. I feel like that's pretty similar oh, to yeah, the spelling yeah. of so, Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. Kyrgyzstan right here. This is them. They talk about Dyson Spheres. Yeah, you've already fucking watched it. Yeah, I love Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is fucking, they're badass. Uh, can I just, go? oh yeah, here we go. Uh, Wikipedia. 
hypothetical megastructure that is complete, that completely encompasses a star and captures a large per- percentage of its power output. Sounds like just like a fucking like cr- like a sci-fi like the sci-fi channel and like cable like B movie or something like being able to like harness the energy of the sun. Yeah. But like trying to think like where you can actually at, at, that there's a point within our human civilization that we could actually do that. I don't even I don't even know what the fuck you do with the core. What the fuck do you do with the power of the sun? Well, dude, think about how insane like if you were to be plopped into 1860 and you had a fucking like laptop i mean they would kill you like, like <laughs> i mean no, I, I i legitimately think they would they would kill you because it would be like witchcraft or something like it would be yeah it's even like 1960 if you did that like people would like faint that it, it yeah, would just like pulled a phone out of your pocket yeah yeah they it's would, like yeah, oh well what do you need to know blah blah, blah and who do i need like like they would probably pass out from sheer fucking disbelief yeah. Well, I feel like that kind of They circle, couldn't even imagine that. I feel like that circles back to what we talked about before we even got into the Fermi paradox with like how far we've advanced in just the past 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, we have... It's crazy. Yeah. <sighs> I, I mean, just think about it. My the brain's thing, a pretzel. Like, <laughs> the, these things right here that you all fucking carry around, these phones, have more computing power than what put us on the fucking moon back in 1969. This is a direct address. Yeah. To the, to the online public. Yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. This, fucking, this phone with a Final Fantasy background has much more power than what put us on the fucking moon. That was only 51 years yeah. ago. The, yeah. These these motherfuckers used to be rooms large, like a whole room like with gigantic with, machines dedicated to... With tens of people yeah. having to man them to and, be able to use them. And it could barely do a basic fucking function of what we can do right now. And in Supposedly. 50, Oh shit! Here we go. <laughs> okay, so like, and so, in, so I, and in fifty-one years, a fucking a four-year-old can use them like it's nothing. Yeah, oh, I can't even. It's instinct. I can't even. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine like what's gonna like when we're. So like the people that are like, I guess the boomers of like our age now. They're like people that are like fifty, sixty, seventy, whatever older, and like they don't understand technology now. Like. I can't fathom like what it's going to be like when we're that age, like how far civilization is going to go and like how advanced yeah. we're going to be. That like I can't comprehend it because I feel like now like anyone our age can comprehend like basically any point of like pretty common technology, but there's going to be a point where like we just we can't like understand it and what well, not necessarily. Uh, so, so, no, I think I so I think. I have seen this a little bit, and I don't know if this is exactly like a great example right now, but I've seen this with coding. Like, in the beginning, coding was something like only a very, very, very small percentage of people had access to and could learn, and that's why Bill Gates was able to get to where he was, because I think he like, he did some crazy shit where he was like, he had access, I think he wasn't even supposed to have access, but he somehow like worked his way into getting access to Fucking cheater coding. And he, well, but yeah, it he he anyone. he had access to like this library or this this area on campus where he was at that was like revolutionary at the time, and he he was just constantly in there just fucking around with it. So yeah, he's one of the only people at the time who was able to like had such unlimited access to it and was just constantly doing it that he became the fucking genius motherfucker that he is now. Right. Well, yeah. and so like I think about it like people that are older like a lot of them don't really know how to type very well. Like, you know, like they have to kind of like yeah. press, but it's something that is so calm. Like most people that are 30 and under can type like proficiently, like standard. I literally keyboard. had like this exact conversation with my dad like a week ago. Cause he's like typing and he's like got like the monkey fingers, like monkey just using fingers. his like index. And I'm like, yeah, dad, I'm like, they have home row keys and like, just use like your four fingers and like, let them rest there. And like you type like normal. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to learn that. I don't care to learn that. It's just, I it, it I don't care. So well, like, yeah, well, if you don't, but that's what I'm saying, like, because we learned that in fourth grade, and it's, like, something that we just do commonly now. But I think that kids, like, now, maybe not everywhere, but in a lot of places, are learning to do those things early. And if you think about it, we are. I think we are going to look stupid when we're fifty, and everyone knows how to code because it is literally the language of every significant thing that we use. 
it's how it works and 95% of people don't know how it works and, and could not tell it what right, to that, do. That That's what I was saying like five minutes ago is that there's going to be, I feel like there's going to be a point where we're, we've reached like our age group or maybe like millennials have like right. peaked in our understanding or care to understanding of technology and it's just going to get to the, the same point where it's cyclical and it just repeats with generations like right now like, yeah, that's why, yeah. that's like, why now, like older people like they're like i don't understand that like, all this iphone and social media stuff so i just don't care to get with it and there's going to be a point where potentially that we're at the same level of like advancement in technology where the younger generations like know like how to use everything proficiently and it's like a second language to them and we're just like I don't understand this. It doesn't make sense to me. Back in my day, we just used our iPhone to message or call someone. Like, right. I can't yeah. fathom like how far technology will advance in such a short time. Right. Well, yeah. And given the like the trends of like how it's gone in the past like twenty, thirty years, like it's going to reach a point that like we literally just like can't fathom or understand. Like, who knows what the fuck's going to happen? Yeah, no one can see the future. Yeah, <clears throat> but well, yeah, if you follow the trends, it's it's likely that we yeah we're going to well, get outpaced I only, soon. I only disagree I'm slightly. Getting outpaced right now, I can barely yeah. use my phone. <laughs> I only I only disagree slightly because like I've read I can't remember what it was, but I read like this good article one time about like why older generations have such an issue with understanding technology nowadays, uh, and it was because like it was so. And, like, this could also feed back into your guys' point. So, like, I could see either... I can see both sides of this argument. But, uh, but like, it was so revolutionary at the time. And, and like, things... So, like, we understand when we see a play button, right? We know what that means. But, like, people back then, they had z- literally zero frame of reference. Like, they had no idea what any of this new stuff was or what any, any of this stuff meant. So, it was very hard for them to transition or understand what, like, all these buttons meant. So, like, when we even though we didn't know what a fucking wherever the first place it popped up, like what an on, like, cause the, so an on switch is like that thing on the back there, Zach, which is like, what is like a zero and a fucking line. Mm-hmm. Like we just inherently know what that means. Like, Oh, that's the power switch. Like, like it is not even like, we don't even think about it. That's just that. Yeah. That's the on switch or like a pause and play button. Like those popped up on, I don't even know, like eight tracks or something before then. Like I have no fucking idea. Like we just know, Oh, that's play. But like older generations had nothing like they had. So like it, and, but that's something else. It translates across every piece of technology that we've had so far. So like, like I have a play button right here on my fucking laptop. And I know what that means just by looking at it because I've seen it on so many other past um, iterations of technology before. Well, like the older generation, it was brand fucking new to them. Like they had no idea what, what any of these symbols meant because it, because it, it, it was so new. So like now they see it and they don't have any frame of reference of, well, this was a play button back before, so that's what it is now. But we've had so many different cycles of technology that it's just carried on through that we have a better understanding because of that. Yeah. So, like, I've read that, but also I could see it at the same point. Like, there could be some new technology that comes out that has a brand new frame of reference that the kids grow up learning and they they understand, like, yeah, that's a fucking, that's a Neuralink button. Like, you press that, and I can type into Google and understand exactly, like, I know exactly what's going on. Neuralink, you don't even got to fucking type it. You just yeah. think it, and you fucking learn it. Exactly. Instantly. So, like, there might, so I <clears throat> so I get to your guys' point, too. It's like, there could be something that pops up that, like, we suddenly become the boomers, and it's like, we have zero frame of reference, but everyone understands it, because, like, then. it starts I here. Be a yeah. damn boomer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I get I'm both be points. I'm already a boomer. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be my own boomer deleter. All right, we're back from <laughs> we're back from a little bit of a break that we just took. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, subject jump. So uh, now it's Chandler's turn. He's gonna bring up his conversation point that he wanted to talk about. We'll go for a little bit, and then we will end the podcast on a high note. So go ahead, Chandler. What's up? So I, I I've already like brought this up with each of you on separate occasions, mostly with Trevor, because every night I come home from work, I'll just vent to Trevor about the bullshit I deal with. Like, ever since COVID has happened, like, I'm sure I could speak for pretty much every, like, retail worker. Like, the amount of bullshit that we have had to put up with is just exponential. Like, literally, like, and it's not an exaggeration. Like, every day I am, like, verbally abused by customers, like, coming into our store because they feel like their freedom is encroached upon by being asked to wear a fucking mask in like a global health pandemic in one of the biggest cities in the country. 
and it blows my mind. Like, I've been told that like I need to fuck off, and my rules are fucking bullshit, and this is all a fucking hoax. Like, I, I can't even like count like how many times this has happened to me, and it's fucking horseshit. And I know that every other like retail place that like enforces some kind of like mandatory like mask wearing or like any kind of thing to like prevent this like within big metropolitan cities gets the same treatment, and it's fucking horseshit. I. I mean, we can snowball into this on, like, just how shitty, like, people <clears throat> treat retail workers. But it's fucking ridiculous, dude. Like, every day I come home, like, I fucking hate my job. Like, <laughs> I'll, like, sit, like, in the parking lot of, like, my work, and I have to, like, mentally prepare myself to, like, go in and, like, deal with these people. Like, it is... In the six... Like, I've worked at the same company for six and a half years, and I've dealt with a myriad of fucking bullshit and just, like crazy like asinine stuff but like this is the most like stressful and just petty annoying bullshit i have ever had to deal with in my entire working career so like to give some like context to it like the restaurant that i work at is within dallas county and dallas county like it's not enforced but it is strictly encouraged that you have like that everyone wears a mask or a cloth or something whenever they go to, like, any kind of essential business. So we enforce that. So we ask everyone that, like, comes into our restaurant, like, while they go to, like, a serving line. And to give context to people that might not know, it's not, like, a restaurant where you sit down and you look at a menu and someone else goes get your food. It's, like, a cafeteria style. It's, like, you walk up and you're, like, within a foot's distance from exposed food. So that's why we ask that people wear masks. And I I, I, I just, I, I can't... I can't get into, like, the headspace of the people that don't see where the issue is of them not wearing some kind of mask. And I get cussed out every single day for it. And it is the most bullshit I have ever experienced. I fucking hate it with every fiber of my entire being. Yeah. I, I, I just don't get, like, even, like, if you live in, like, within the county of, like, So we live in Dallas County of one of the definitely like one of the biggest, probably the biggest metropolitan areas within the state, within the entire country, too. Like, how can you just be so like oblivious to the fact that every other business wants you to wear a mask? That when you come in here, it's like, uh, 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 you you expect me to wear a mask? Like, what, 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 why, why, what's going on? Why do I have to do this? It's like. Have you not been anywhere else like in the past two months? <laughs> like this is fucking normal right now. Just deal with it. It's not an inconvenience. Like just put something over your fucking face. Yeah, it, it's I, not that big of a deal. It is to some people though. What, and what it the, fucking no, yeah, blows but, my but, mind. But, it, but it's not. It's, it's not it's, a big deal. Yeah, it's so easy but it to do. But it is to some people, and I yeah. just don't get it. Are Are you intentionally leaving out the location, or or can that be brought up? Well, I I don't think I've said where I work before. Right. Like I, in would, the podcast. I would refrain from doing that. Don't don't say where you work. Okay. Well, let's say this establishment. To be vague, I think that some of the people that frequent this establishment, maybe have an idea in mind that this is kind of like, a good old boy type place that I can go, and a lot of people will also think these rules are bullshit and maybe this is like their safe haven. So it's it's a barbecue restaurant. So mostly when you think like barbecue, it's mostly like kind of like Southern, like everyone's just like family, like come together. Like you don't got to deal with like extra bullshit. like, I get that line of thought. I think that's how these people think. Cause you clearly they know that they have to do this and they're acting oblivious because, well, I mean, people do this everywhere, but particularly for this place, I think that, People might think that, yeah, you know, they're not going to have these bullshit rules and they show up and then you do have the same rules that everyone else has to abide by and they get pissed off by it because they think that they can just come there and I think that they might expect something different. Like they might expect that to be a different thing and it's not. What blows my mind is what I don't, I just don't get. And this happens like everywhere. Like we have signs on the doors that's like, it says like, In order to, like, just to, like, paraphrase it, like, in order to keep everyone safe, we require that all customers wear a mask while they are inside of the building. And, like, it says that on the door, both doors, like, when you come in. And there's people that, like, come in, they, like, like, go up to the door, they're, like, look at it, read it, 
don't have a mask on. They're like, and then come in and I'm like, hey, I'm sorry, but you got to have like a mask or like some kind of cloth or something over your mouth. Like before you come in, they're like, uh, what, what, what? I'm like, motherfucker, you just read it. I know you just read it. I watched you just read it. Don't play fucking stupid with me. Like this is. <clears throat> it, yeah. I, I mean, and I, I wonder if maybe it would be some of this would be mitigated by them adding uh, <clears throat> the caveat that you must wear the mask while in line or because I, I went that, to, we went to we went to a restaurant the other day and there was a sign at the door and it said as a courtesy or whatever for the for the COVID-19 stuff, we are asking all people who are waiting in line for food to wear a mask. But if it just says you have to wear a mask inside, I might be like. Do you mean like I have to wear it at the table when I eat? Like I might actually ask that because I don't know if that's what they mean, even though. OK, well, to go on <clears> that, <throat> I have been asked countless times and it's just like after I already tell them and they all are already visibly upset about it. And I tell them, hey, you got to wear a mask. And like eight times out of ten, like the response is, how am I supposed to eat with a mask on? I'm like, look here, you childish motherfucker. <laughs> I don't expect you to eat with a mask on. I expect you to eat. I expect you to fucking wear a mask when you're ordering food. And then when you sit down to eat your food, you can take the mask off. You fucking child. Like <laughs> what is so hard to comprehend about this? Yeah. I Like it, it's literally, it's baffling to me. And you know what? I'll just say it. Like it's at the location that we're at, it's in Dallas and it's in, I would say for the most part, like the clientele that we get at this, chain of restaurants is predominantly older white people and at this particular location we get a lot of hispanic and we get a lot of black people and we also get a lot of white people it's pretty even playing field the n more than nine times out of ten not like 85 percent of the time like the people that give me shit is like 30 year old or plus white people. It is only white people that have a problem with wearing masks. Yeah. And it's just because they feel like it's like some kind of like encroachment on their freedom. Like they yeah. feel like they don't have to because <laughs> yeah. this is America and I don't have to wear this if I don't want to. Like, I don't know like where like the line has been drawn between like, it's a business. I can have whatever fucking rules I want. Yeah. And if those rules are illegal, then I will pay the consequences, but I get to make those rules because it's my goddamn business. If you were to go yeah. to th any of their houses and they said that you had to wear a star spangled cock ring to fucking walk in the door, <laughs> you would have to abide by it. Cause yeah. it's their fucking house. It's well, not, you can't just not because it's America and then walk in their house. Like well, it doesn't matter I, yeah. what the rule is. I feel like, I feel like this kind of goes back to, so, some of these people, so so, so let, let's go back to, to like the, the cake bullshit of like what was that like twenty thirteen so somewhere around there right like the about like the gay yeah like yeah or like the yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the bakery owners that didn't want to make a cake for a gay couple or something yeah yeah, yeah right? exactly okay. like that and, and like it was it was screamed in fucking conservative heaven that you had to fuck like they're a small business they can make whatever fucking rules they want and how dare you make them try to like abide by this and they were like super small business and like yeah that's their rules you have to fucking you have to abide by it if you go in there and you, you better expect that. But then now it doesn't align with their fucking, uh, their idea of what freedom is. And, and, and a lot of these people are just fucking trigger happy with, uh, like with, with the freedom bullshit in general, right? Like anything that's like slightly like, Oh, this might, this might slightly infringe on a right. And then they fucking lose their minds because they're just waiting. I swear for to God, it. mask just is a trigger it. word. Yeah. I, I <clears throat> swear to God. Yeah. Like I can be talking to someone. I'm like, Hey, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry. And like, I can like just look at them and like while I'm talking to them, as soon as I say the word mask, they're like, "Yep." Are you serious? I'm like, bro. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it is <clears throat> not a big deal. You are making such a huge scene, but like, and this comes from like the people that are like, "Oh, uh, uh, libtards get triggered so easily when I say uh, <laughs> AR-15, but right. you say mask around a it's Republican." The greatest irony, and you know it. I mean, and I'll, I mean, not to get political or anything, but I lean a lot towards Republican ideals too. But these fucking, these type of people, like, they're, they might not all be Republican. I won't generalize like that, but it seems to me that way they fit that criteria. Like, they are the exact embodiment of what they make fun of all the fucking time. Oh, yeah. Like, it's oh, yeah. so hypocritical, and it just fucking blows my mind. Yeah. 
And well, it is, well, yeah, no, well, no, that's what I'm saying. It, like, it harkens back to I, I think that old argument of it, uh, of the of the whole cake thing. It's like, oh, it's a business, right? And like, they, if that's their fucking, if that's their rule, then you have to abide by that because we respect small businesses around here. And then like the small business that you work for is like, hey, you have to wear a mask to come in during a pandemic. And those same people, I know for a fact they're the same fucking people. I don't even have to. I don't even have to question it. Lose their fucking minds about it. They're like, how? Like, uh, 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 that's that. That's against my. Uh, you can't tell me to wear a mask. It's like, well, I'm a small business and I fucking can. And like we were talking about this earlier, it's like, okay, and, and we understand that wearing a mask in like normal everyday time is not something that is going to be required to walk into a business. No one's just gonna make you randomly wear a mask and come into a business. But th- th- these are weird times. Yeah, but, but so so, say, so this like, has become the new, like I was semi-norm. saying, semi-norm. Yeah, this has become the, the new being. semi-norm. So like. Like I was saying to you earlier, you walk in. You walk into a business, right? You're not wearing a fucking shirt. You're just fucking like no shirt. Yep. And you walk in, That's awesome. and the guy's like, and, and like one of the cashiers like, hey, you gotta you gotta wear a shirt to come in here. And this would be the equivalent of the guy being like, oh, I don't have to wear. What, I have to wear a shirt to come in here. What? I, don't, I have to wear a shirt. What you gonna? All right. Well, look here. Give me a shirt. I'll, I'll put a shirt on. I can come in. It's like, well, we're not gonna give you a shirt. You're not gonna give me a shirt. <laughs> what, where am I going to get a shirt? Give me your shirt then. I, I need to come into this business. Uh, you're just going to expect me to wear a shirt to come in here? It's like, this is the new norm net for right now, and it's temporary. We all fucking know it's temporary. If you haven't been living under a fucking rock, we know this is the kind of weird norm that we have to put into place for right now, and people are throwing a fucking fit about it. Look, I get it, too, if you're in like a pretty rural community and like the population of like your town isn't that big and like COVID isn't a big deal like in your town and like just one like if there's like a hundred businesses in that in that town and one business enforces like the mass thing I can see it maybe being like a big deal to some like well why doesn't this place or this place or this place do it it's in Dallas County literally like I mean I can't say because I don't go out that much because I try to social distance and abide by the rules as much as I can I don't want to get out and see people right now but I mean, just the Walgreens down the street has a sign, like, in the front of the door. It is required for you to have a mask to come in here. And I feel like 90% of businesses within this county have the same rules because it's a fucking huge city. And because they have to, if you're a business and that is the order, you have to put that out there for you to remain credible as a business and for them to... Yeah, and I try try and tell people that, too, because, like, we get... uh, I mean, there's just no way to, like please everybody and we get more complaints of like people like coming in and like if they like snuck in or something and like while like i wasn't paying attention or something they didn't have a mask on like i'll get like three or four complaints or something like that guy wasn't wearing a mask like he's endangering like all the other people in here like why does why isn't he doing it like we all need to like abide by these rules it's like yeah i agree i'm sorry i should have got it versus like one person that's like I have to wear a mask. You're encroaching on my freedom, and I, uh, I have asthma. Or I have this. I, 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 uh, or whatever. Oh my god! If it comes back to some medical bullshit, that oh is- no, that's happened to me so many times. Like people oh, say, oh yeah, my like, god, dude. Yeah. What? Well, what? The, I think the thing that I, I would have been yeah. like, oh, well, then you don't need the fucking chuck wagon platter. To <laughs> suggest the fucking steam. Yeah, cabbage. I've wanted, I've, I've wanted to say that to people so many times. Like some woman like came in like it was, it was a couple of weeks ago, and she's like, I like tell her to wear the mask. She's like, I have asthma, and it is very hard for me to breathe in this mask. And I just wanted to say, I'd be like, well, you know that you live in Dallas County, and you know that businesses are going to make you wear a mask. So if you know you have an underlying health condition that makes it hard for you to breathe wearing said mask you should not go out to where you are expected to go into something that makes it difficult for you to perform in a normal human way because of your health condition you should get someone else to go do it for you but you choose not to because you just don't give a shit and you get pissed off when someone makes you follow the social norms that have been set by everyone else The, the only people that will get pissed off by that are people that go into this knowing what they're trying to do and oh, I know. They, they, know they know. They know yes. what they're doing, and they're trying yes. to get away with it. And when yeah. you call them out on their bullshit, that's when they get pissed. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's like they're more mad that they got caught yes. than than yeah. it is that you encroached on their right. But the thing that I think pisses me off about it more than anything else is, and, and like like you said earlier, this could maybe kind of cycle back to the way that retail workers are treated in general. But the fact that these people talk to you how they do, and it's not your it's not your fucking fault. You have no bearing over over the business that you work at making people wear a mask. Like 
and, and, and like even you can recognize that <clears throat> maybe right now it's ridiculous or, or whatever. Maybe I wouldn't necessarily make you do this, but I am a worker here. I'm paid to uphold the rules of this establishment. Like that is my job. And I have to tell you when you come in here to not wear a mask that I am paid to do this. And they treat you like you're the man that made the rules and you're the biggest fucking piece of shit for making them. And, and like, yeah. and I know they know better because they work for places that make them do bullshit. And all that they're doing is putting their I, bullshit that they take from work onto you. And they yeah, know I, that they're feel, doing it. I feel like it's mostly just like people. And I, I mean, I can, I can agree with this. Like people are fucking sick and tired of dealing with COVID. If that's your, if that's your take, like that's fine. Like I can understand how you are frustrated with how society has changed since we've, had to adapt to a new way of living in a sense. But these people are taking those frustrations out on the first person that makes them confront these new changes out in public when they don't have to deal with it at home. So like if you're fucking scrolling through, I don't know, fucking Breitbart news like all day or watching Fox or something, you just constantly berate about how like Corona is such bullshit. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to go out and get some barbecue. And then like you step into the real world and someone's like, Hey, you got to wear a mask. They're like, Oh, well, you know, this is bullshit, right? Like yesterday I had, yeah. uh, or the other day I had like the first person, like the the very first person I talked to, like came without a mask. I'm like old woman. No, she wasn't old. She's probably like 40 or something. Like looked like a Karen. She's fucking and, old as fuck. Yeah. She was a Karen. And I was like, <laughs> Hey, I was like, you got to wear like some, and it's not like I'm rude about it either. I try to be like well, right. the most like understanding and like calm as I can be. So I mean, I'm trying to not get cussed out every single day. <laughs> and I like tell her, I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, I'm sorry. I was like, you got to wear like some kind of mask or like a cloth or something over your mouth. Like while you're in the store, like just by like the serving line, if you want to dine in, you can dine in. But just while you're in the order and food, you got to wear a mask. She's like, oh my God. It's like, you know, the N95s don't even uh, properly conceal X amount of percentage of whatever air you're breathing out. Right. I'm like, I, I was like, okay. She's like, your mask there. She's like, uh, how much uh, percentage of air are you blocking out? And how much uh, bacteria are yeah. you putting out of your mask? I'm like, look, bitch, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. These are the rules. I'm sorry. I cannot change this. Right. You have no bearing. It, you're not in charge of them. You didn't make and these rules. And then literally like the next customer come in was like an elderly couple. And I tell the same thing to them. elderly white couple. All these people I've talked about so far have been white. I just want to put it out there. It's white people that are causing a problem with this. Do with that information as you will. Hey, 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 hey I worked, I worked at a paint store. 90% of my problems came from old ass white people. <laughs> that's Look, just, how it just old ass white people don't like retail workers. And I, that's just a fucking bona fide fact. I think it I think it depends on what the situation is. Like in in this case, well hang on. I, let I me, think for, let, with, let me let me just finish with this real quick. Like the next person that comes in cuz this goes back to what Trevor said where like this elderly couple comes in, I tell them the same thing. They both get pissed off and the husband like starts going off on me. He's like, "Oh, this is a bunch of bull crap. You know this stuff's not real. It's getting blown out of proportion." She's like starts taking it out on me and the wife's like She's like, honey, it's not his fault. It, it's okay. And he's like, no, he's the one that's making me do this right now. I'm just like. <sighs> yeah, my soul just left me a little bit. <laughs> but like, I just, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. Like, it, if it was like a year from now or even like a year ago and like someone like came up with like some new rule where they're like, because in Japan or like in foreign countries, Asian countries like China or Japan, like. It's pretty normal to like wear a mask, like go around. Like nobody like says anything. I don't know if businesses enforce it, but if if the business that I worked for a year ago were to say you need to wear a mask, I understand why people would get pissed off. But right now, like you should be expected to it, especially within the biggest metropolitan complex within the state. Like I don't understand how you don't think or how you get to the conclusion that it shouldn't be an issue, right? Well, well, even if it wasn't, it, it's like in these weird trying times, it, it, like even if you're not in a major metropolitan area for a business to, and, and it's not like the business does it to be a fucking asshole. They're doing it to protect themselves in case yeah, some kind of some, spread breaks out. Yeah, they're, they're if, not, some, if someone comes in and they're not wearing a mask and they like somehow like breathe or like cough and like get on like 
my fucking my beans or something and I serve that beans and I give 20 people coronavirus, the whole fucking company yeah. is done for. Like, I mean, <clears throat> I don't understand how you can't think of yeah, things that, like on it, like it, yeah. a bigger like scheme of things. I say like, I'm not just trying to protect myself or the employees that work here. I'm trying to protect every single person that comes into this store and protect the quality of food that is within this store. Or yeah. maybe, maybe that the interests are diverted elsewhere besides you. Like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about you. Like if you got Corona and croaked over tomorrow, if you're a punk ass bitch to me, like, yeah, sorry, tough shit, but I don't want you fucking coughing up and spreading your nasty, whatever diseases in, especially in these kind of times on other people that are just trying to be normal folk and just doing what they're supposed to do right now. But not what they're supposed to do, what they're encouraged to do, I right. should say. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, and like, even right now, if you're, if you're going and you're, in, you're in some rural county and they're just trying to protect their business, their namesake, their, the people around them that they value as customers, you're trying to protect them from the, the spread of the disease. And they ask you politely to wear a mask. Like you shouldn't freak out about that because it's so right now that it, it like it's, it's become the new norm it's normal they it, it is normal that. for this to happen right now especially like around where we live like in the counties that are neighboring to it it's not some strange thing that's brought out of like we just pulled out of our ass and there's no there's no explanation for it for it Th- this is the new norm and you shouldn't fucking be surprised or upset and freak out on the guy at the door who's like, hey, I, I, hey, I'm really sorry, you gotta wear a mask. And if you do that, fuck you. You're not a good person. You're not a good person if you do that. That's an asshole move. Well, there have been times where, like, just <clears throat> just before I came over here, I went to 7-Eleven, and I went, went, went in without a mask. Like, I wasn't even thinking, like, I'm gonna go in without a mask. I just, I got in the habit, of, I just got out of my car and walked in, and I realized right. I didn't have it. And I didn't turn around and go grab it, but if someone would have said, hey, man, you have to have a mask when you're in here, I would have been like, you're right. Like I forgot it in my car. I'll go get it. Okay, and that's something that I was gonna say before you brought that up is, I, these people that like I'm bringing up is, well, actually in the past week or so, as it gets more normalized, this shit like the numbers of these people that want to give me bullshit grows. But like, usually there's a larger percentage of people that understand it. Like if I if they come in, and I'm like, hey, I'm sorry, you got to wear a mask or some kind of cloth over your mouth when you come in here. They're like, they're like yeah, they're like. I got, I got one in the car. I'll go grab it real quick. I'm like, okay. I was like, I'm sorry for like an inconvenience. She's like, no, 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 it's good. Like, I should have brought it with me anyways. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate that. And that's yeah. that's <clears throat> most of the people that like come in. They're, right. They they know that they should do it. If they can get away without it, they will. But if they're asked to do it, they'll be like, yeah, okay, I get it. That makes sense. Yeah, like, or not a problem. Th- that's why I said the only people that get mad are ones that are in, that you know for sure are intentionally trying to do it, and they're already on edge thinking. Oh, I wonder if they're going to say something about my fucking mask, blah, blah, blah. And then they do, and then they get all pissed off. You know, maybe you go in thinking, you know, hey, if they say something, I'll grab it. If not, it's cool. Or you think, or you just forget, and you come in, and it is what it is. But the only people that would get mad about you telling them that are people that know what the fuck they're doing. Like, they're not just caught off guard by, oh, my God, what are you talking about? Masks. This is a foreign concept to me. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Well, like, the thing, too, is, like, if people come in and, like, if they have a legitimate reason or, like, they're nice about it, I'm like, hey, you got to wear a mask. They're like, oh, shit, like, I, I'm i sorry. Like, it's in my other car or somewhere. Like, I left it at the house. I forgot. Is there, like, another way I can order or something? I'm like, yeah, I'll take your order right here. I'll go put it in. I'll take it out to your car. Like, <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, that's no big deal. Like, I'll help you out. You're nice. Thank you. But if someone comes in and they're like, what, so I can't get food now because I don't have a mask because I have to follow your rules? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you don't have a mask, you don't get food. <laughs> like, yeah. Be nice. In hopes and, that they just say fuck it and right. leave and then you don't have to deal with it anymore. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're nice, like people will try to accommodate you in some way. But I mean, if you're an asshole, get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so like, so, so we'll, we'll make this go full, full circle. I think a lot of it also harkens back to just the way that people will fucking treat retail workers because that you get these people and they have such little fucking control in their own lives that like, like something like, you know, their bosses are harping down on them about some bullshit that they don't want to deal with. So they get into this mindset of they go and the first fucking person that tells them what to do, that's not their boss that they can't tell to go fuck off. And they're going to tell them to go fuck off because that's like that is their weird fucking twisted way of taking control back of their life. So like they see you and you're like 
polite and you're really nice and you're like, hey, can you please wear a mask? And their boss has been on their ass about whatever the fuck it is. And they're like, and it doesn't even have to be a mask. It could be anything. It's like, hey, I'm sorry, sir. We're out of macaroni. And that motherfucker will just lose their goddamn mind because it's like, how do you run out of macaroni? Yeah. But, uh, like, well, ma- macaro- what kind of what kind of fucking establishment is this? Fucking running out of macaroni. Fuck. Oh, I see what this is. I, I see what this is. <laughs> I see what this is. Okay. Like, yeah. And, yeah. He, I, and I've said this before too. Like, and it's not just food, but the way that I see it is because I've worked in food my whole life is that. Like, you can just tell, like, when you're, like, even if you're, like, with people, like, at a table, like, people that have, well, it's not just that, but, like, people that are either just genuinely, like, kind and understanding people or people that have worked in food before. Because there's mm-hmm. been times where I've been out, like, it's mostly with my family or something, and, like, I'm, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this and this. So, like, hey, I'm really sorry, but we're out of this. I'm, like, okay, that's cool. Well, then I'll take this. And someone's, like, well, how are you out of this? I'm, like. I don't know. I mean, maybe they sold a lot of it today. You fucking run out of stuff. You don't have an infinite supply of food back there. Like, shit happens. Like, yeah. just be kind and courteous about it. Well, what's amazing, too, is that people will also... They will take any advantage to try to get some... Like, I swear to God, there are some people that will go into things and they will be searching for a flaw for that they can yes. find. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so you're going to give me this for 50% off or something like at where I work, I'll be a bartender or something. And it's like, people just expect you to give them free shit. Like I'll be pouring a shot. And I already, whenever I pour a shot, you know, like whenever you on a free pour, four seconds is a shot. So you count to four in your head and that's a shot. I always do like five, five and a half seconds. I almost give like one and a half shots every time because I just, I, li- I like them to see that and be like, oh, he's helping me out and tip me. That's what I want. And I'll get people, I'll pour them a fucking shot and a half and they're like, that's a shot? $12? Come on, man. G- give me a little, come yeah. on, man. Help me out, whatever. And I'm I, like, I literally get the exact <coughs> same thing. Like if I like yeah. cut a meat of plate and it's supposed to be like, uh, four tenths of a pound and I know I go a little heavy on it they're like that's all I get I'm like yeah no no actually no this is all you get and you take fucking a strip off and be like this is this weight you dumbass I, I wish yeah I, I, I wish I could be like that to people cause it, and the one thing that I'll say and this is I, I don't want to be like too negative because there are some good people that like I've right like while this is going on like I've met like some nice people that are like really kind and they're this, like this is the minority yeah, and, and and we know this, but it, it's still appalling that people do this kind of shit. Anyways, I've so. met a lot of kind people that have like been like, "Hey, I'm really glad like y'all are like trying to take like preventative steps. Like that means a lot to us." Or like I've had like a couple people like, "Hey, can I take like your picture, like the store's picture, and like put it on social media because I I like what y'all are doing here, being like real safe." I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely. Like that's fine." So. But to say that the worst experience that I've had, like when all this shit's gone on, like probably the past couple months is, and I've worked at this company for six and a half years and I've dealt with people like getting angry, yelling and cussing at me. I have never, never been this close to like just taking my hat off, taking my shirt off and just being like, I'm clocked out, motherfucker. Let's go. Like (laughs) ready to just fucking knock this motherfucker out. (laughs) Like just some old ass white dude, like in line, comes in with his family. None of them have masks on. I'm like, Hey, I'm like, I'm sorry. I was like, but while you, uh, and normally when I approach this situation, I won't just say, Hey, you need a mask. Cause that just sounds rude. I'll say, Hey, how are you doing? Are y'all dining in or going for takeout? And regardless of the answer, I'm still going to say you need a mask, but I just try and be more approachable. Right. They're like, well, I, I want to dine. In. I'm like, all right, well, that's great. We offer dine in. We just ask that you wear a mask while you go through the serving line or some kind of cloth over your mouth. And they'll say, this guy said, dad, guys, come on. We're getting the fuck out of here. And he looks at me. He's just like, fuck you and fuck off with your bullshit rules. This is fucking bullshit. We're never fucking coming back here again. Fuck this place. Fuck everyone in here. And he's like yelling and screaming at the top of his lungs. And I literally just turned around and just like went to the back of the kitchen. I just went (sighs) like hyperventilating for like 30 seconds because I was in my head. I was like, you are one fuck you away. For me dropping your ass. I don't give a shit about this job. And I'll fucking tell my bosses too. They're like, Chandler, why'd you why'd you knock this 40-year-old out? I'm like, he told me to fuck off like four times. What do you want me to do? I'm like, there's no other, there's no other option here. I mean, 
Yeah, dude. You right. Talk, you talk to me like I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. And I'm going to drop your ass. That's just how it happens. Yeah. Well, well, that's something else that I hate about it is that these people, they hide behind the immunity that they know that they have. And it's, yes, it, it's that too. fucking, it's annoying that they, 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 cause they understand when they walk into an estab- like a food it, establishment or any kind of establishment because 90% of businesses are the, the customer's always right. And that's like the motto and they take it and they hide behind that. Because yes. they know they can get away with shit that they could never get away with with just a normal person. Like like that, you're on the street, right? And some motherfucker walks up to you and just starts cursing you out. You're like, all right, let's go. Like, let's fucking, let's see what happens. Like, let's, let's have a fun night. And then you're at this food establishment and they know that if they can literally say whatever the fuck they want to you. And if you decide you're going to retaliate, you lose your job. Because they're... Because, if you think that they're gonna they're gonna do all this, they're gonna post up on you. They're gonna be they're gonna be a fucking asshole to you. They're gonna uh, they know that if you swing back, they're immediately gonna cry. Oh, this is this is what your this, establishment this, is, like. Your you're, employee, you're cool with your this. Employee like, assaulted me yeah. after I told him to fuck off five times. Yeah, it's like but, I didn't tell him to fuck off. I just asked him politely to uh, yeah. give me another uh, give me another option, and he fucking fought me. Like this is yeah. ridiculous, and it's yeah. and, and it's bullshit. They hide behind that. And they know they're doing it, yep. and they they that's just, just they, shitty people. Yeah, they take this immunity and they spend it because, like I said, they have no control in their regular lives. They're fucking pissed off that they're sitting nine to five behind their office job, or they're working construction all day, and people are fucking breaking down on them because they're lazy motherfuckers and they're not doing their jobs right, and they're getting fucking shit thrown at them all day. Then they come to you and they're like, this "I can fu- they're like I can fuck with this guy because this yeah. guy can't do shit to me." Yeah, and to yeah. put it into context, in that like given situation, and. You can call me a bitch in the comments if you want, but when you like you cry or like tear up, it is a rush of emotions that you cannot process, and that's why you start crying. Is like it's like your body's like reaction to not being able to handle a rush of emotions. And like I walked outside and I just like had to get outside, like get some fresh air, and like I started tearing up because like I wanted to do so much and like say so many things, but I couldn't do it because I know I'm gonna lose my job if I do, and it's not the right thing to do. So like, that just puts like into context. And I've seen like posts on like social media of like retail workers, like mainly like at Walmart or something like people like bitching them out. Cause they're out of toilet paper or something. And they're like crying their eyes out because people just rip into them. Like, fuck you, dude. If you are that kind of person, fuck you. You are the worst <laughs> yeah, kind of person. Yeah, it, you it are is, the it, dregs it is of known, society. It is known <clears throat> on the modern goodies podcast. that if you're one of these people, you're a piece of shit and go fuck yourself. And we don't like you. Yeah. We, you're a piece of shit and we don't like you. Yeah, no, it. But saying that to like come full circle, there has been a good amount of people that do respect the social distancing uh, yeah. encouragements and are trying to be mindful of the pandemic that's going on, and they're really trying to make a conscientious effort to be helpful. And I've met a lot of nice people, but it really just blows it away when you meet these kind of people that just want right. to treat you like you're the shit on the bottom of their boot because you ask them to do one thing. And it's, it just right. sucks. Well, it well, it yeah. really sucks. And I know it's not just me that feels like this. Almost every retail worker right now that has to deal with the bullshit like this has to deal with it too. And it just sucks. <clears> it's <throat> just it's a shitty time to deal with extra shitty people because they get another reason to be shitty to you. Yeah. So you know what? If you're a listener out there and you're a retail worker and you keep getting your shit handed to you every shift... Just beat their ass. Yeah. Hey, you, you know what? Basically, you know what? Fucking cheers to you if you're putting up with this bullshit. All right, yeah. guys, let's fucking let's do a toast. Cheers all the fucking all them. the retail workers going through some bullshit. Just right to now. the retail workers. Retail <laughs> workers, motherfucker. <laughs> Your empty ass. I, <laughs> I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll. It's probably been almost about two two hours now, so I guess we'll go ahead and cut it off there. But uh, yeah, uh, we've had some good conversation tonight. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, go and subscribe uh, to all of our accounts. Uh, you know, we got Instagram, we got Twitter, we got Facebook. Uh, you name you, it. Yeah, yeah. You name it. YouTube. We got everything. Go like, subscribe, share, rate, whatever the fuck you want to do. Uh, keeps us going. It gives us positive feedback. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, you get, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, next week we'll be recording our one year anniversary podcast. We're not sure what we're going to do for that. We're going to try to do something a little bit special for it. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.